we're already a little bit of a head, ahead of schedule, which is good. Um, um, we want to make sure that every presenter gets to start on time. So I am going to go ahead and get going. Um, as many of you know, I will be stepping down as executive director uh, May 31st. We have a new gentleman starting May 1, and he and I and Daryl, Sue, and Robin will be working together uh, for the first month. Uh, making sure everybody's onboarded and um, everybody knows uh, what's happening. And I know that Brian is logged into our session today and I appreciate that. Um, we welcome him. We certainly welcome Daryl, who is our website manager and our uh, meeting planning manager. They both are bringing um, a lot to the association and I know we're gonna have a really positive future. So I wanna begin by actually thanking all of you. Um, we would not be here if it weren't for chapter leaders who are keeping the chapters up and running. Um, I also want to thank all of our attendees for giving up part of your morning to come to spring training. And this whole, this whole analogy about spring training and ingredients of a successful chapter, I like to use analogies. I like to use pictures because um, I'm both auditory and visual, so I need both for anything to sink in. So that's kind of why we're doing it this way. Um, some of you that don't know me, well, some of you who know me, they go, well, this is all a little hokey getting into the ingredients, and that's by choice, because um, I think we can have some fun with it. But back to the whole spring training thing, you know, even the most successful baseball players, ordinarily, with 2020 being an exception, get together for spring training. Because um, even though they make millions of dollars, they still know they need to dedicate time uh, to spring training. Why is that so? Because everybody gets rusty. I don't care if you're a chapter leader, if you're a baseball player, um, everybody needs to practice the fundamentals. And in any team, like we have here at NMA right now, and as many of you are getting ready to do with chapter elections, you get new players. So you want to assess them and start to get to know one another um, so that when the season starts, you can work together as a team. So, alluding to what Michelle talked about in terms of 2020 especially, chapter leaders, chapter leaders need to lead. Now more than ever, we need to up our game, we need to sharpen our skills, and quite frankly, fasten our seat belts. And like this little guy down in the corner, we don't always know what's around the corner, but if we're prepared, we'll be ready for it. So today's learning objectives are really threefold. Being able to recognize the characteristics of a value-added chapter. Also being able to spot behaviors or missed opportunities that can undermine success, including the after effects of COVID-19. I was originally just going to do the ingredients piece and Michelle asked me to take some time during this presentation to talk to the virus a little bit, talk to uh, what is, how to work better from home. Although I imagine by now most of us, uh, myself included, have kind of gotten the hang of it. But there again, it's fundamental, so we'll take a little bit of time. And then we wanna share what some of our chapters have told us that they are doing. Uh, so then lastly, the th Third bullet is presidents, vice presidents, all officers, everybody on here, um, you need to have impact. And hopefully after today, um, you'll be ready to, when everything is open and you're back on the team, you'll be ready to lead with impact. So this whole ingredients of a successful NMA chapter is to remind us that building and sustaining a chapter is an ongoing process. Luckily, there are no secret ingredients. And there really aren't, it sounded like I said eight, I didn't. Uh, there really aren't any hard to find ingredients. So first and foremost is chapter leaders, you are the top chefs. And you want the freshest ideas, the most interesting choices of things to do, and a full complement of chapter programming to whet the appetites of your members. So let's start out with, guess who's coming to dinner? Probably half the crowd on the phone today know exactly what 
uh, the movie I was referring to, and the rest of you may not get this, but trust me, you can Google it. Um, who is coming to the table? Well, first of all, executive management, or if you're community chapter, community leaders. They're there for everything you do. Their eyes are feasting on what you're planning to, to share. Next are human resources and training. And yeah, I realize that in some organizations, human resources and training are, while well, connected, they're entirely different entities. Um, they just partner together. But no matter how big or how small your sponsoring organization is, HR has got to have a seat at the table. And then of course, you're always providing for your existing members. But, and we're gonna talk a lot about this, you also want potential members to see what you have cooked up. So what do you need to know? What do they like to eat? I mean, that's something we go through. Uh, you know, you invite people to your home. Uh, you try and find out, are, are they allergic to anything? Is somebody vegan? Is somebody uh, pescatarian? Is somebody whatever? Um, you also need to kind of look around and go, what do you think we might like to try here? Um, so there's a lot of things to consider. So you got to decide what you're fixing. So if you're going to grab the recipe book, you want to start with your chapter vision and mission statements. How long has it been since you've looked at those? How many of you as officers could write down your chapter's mission statement without having to look it up? Because you see, that's the hook. Um, you want to eat healthy. And by saying that, I mean, hook your vision and your mission statement to the company goals and objectives, or for community chapters, the community needs. Your organization, your CEO, your leadership team, they've posted those company goals and objectives. They're out there. And I urge you when you get back, find them. And then lay your chapter goals next to them and make sure they are compatible. Make sure that you are right from the get-go saying to executive management, we are here to support you. And then use fresh ingredients. You know, look for new recipes. We all tired, and if you like the rest of us during this virus, I'm so sick of eating my own cooking. I could, you know what? Um, so you need to quit fixing the same old thing. All right, what do you do next? We got to set the table, right? Um, to me, the top one is the important one, taking stock of your brand. And you may go, brand? Uh, why is that important? Well, it's the perception. That's what people think they see your chapter is all about. And guess what? People eat with their eyes first. So the question you need to ask yourself is, how do people see our chapter? What is our perception? What is our brand? Details, because it's the little things that matter. Stretch the limits a bit. Do something different. In terms of place cards, that's on there for new people. Get new members engaged early. And let me mention that everything I have on these slides today will be flushed out later. Uh, the rest of the presenters are gonna take time to really uh, dig into some of these. And um, so what I'm really doing this morning is just kind of giving you an overview. Uh, anticipate the unexpected. The goodness knows we've just gotten an exercise in that. But even at your chapter, you got to have a, a backup plan. What happens if the restaurant floods where you're having a meeting? What happens if your speaker doesn't show up? Um, are you able to handle those things as a leader? And trust me, those of you that have been thrown curveballs, probably end up better leaders as a result of it because you've had a chance to fix things. And then never forget that you're the host. Um, I have to watch this myself at the annual conference because there's, you know, the staff is few and our attendees are many. And I have to watch, not running around trying to help Sue, especially and Robin with details. I need to take time to stop and chat with everybody and mingle and make sure that we're meeting everybody's needs. Well, the same goes for you as a chapter leader. All right, so then you need to assess your cooking tools. How much executive management support do you have? Do you need to pay some extra attention to that? Have new people come in from other facilities? 
Um, do they understand what the chapter is about? Are you just some appendage? Are you just some appendage that they know is there and really don't know much about? An officer transition plan. Don't just hand over the keys when new officers take their oath of office. There needs to be a transition plan. <clears throat> Probably one of the things, <clears throat> pardon me, that is hurtful is when I am chatting with someone who calls in here and we're so glad they do. Robin, Sue, and I and Daryl love to chat with our chapter leaders, so always call in here. But so many times I hear someone say, well, they kind of left me hanging. I don't have anything from last year. I'm really floundering. What do I, how do, how do I do this, that or the other? And that's a shame, that should not happen. All right, chapter meeting yearly plan. Um, do you have one? Please don't wing it month by month. Make sure that you are planning ahead. Same with your professional development plan. And Deborah this afternoon is gonna really dig into that one. Um, community service activity plan. Plan ahead on that one. Uh, what can you do? What's going on in your community? Budget allocations is simply, have you budgeted for some of these things? Um, a lot of chapters get in trouble as mid-year they realize, oh, we've not really connected everything we're doing to the budget. And trust me, the chapter treasurer will let you know. You can avoid that by laying out your year. And then make sure you have a membership growth plan. And we'll talk about that. How are you going to get new people in the chapter? Um, you need them, trust me. So there you go. All right. Uh, if you're like me, um, both what I inherited and my, because I like to cook. Um, I have a ton of cookbooks. And I don't know about the rest of you, but for whatever reason, I'm standing there looking at a million cookbooks in my kitchen. And what do I do? I grab my iPhone and I Google whatever it is I want to make. Um, I suspect I'm not the only one. Um, but one, one way or another, um, you got to have guidelines. Now, is it okay to cook from scratch? Well, if you learned at your grandmother's knee, maybe. Um, but only if you've had lots of practice and years of experience. So if you're fairly new to leading the chapter, it's best to find some tried and true and tested recipes, or if you're on the internet, go down to the comments and see what people have to say. I remind you that on the right are guidebooks that are there for every position in the chapter. Now, the CAR-1. One of Daryl's new responsibilities is um, learning to do the CAR-1 submissions, which is mainly, or which is, in my estimation, the best roadmap there is for chapter leaders. Um, it's your chapter activity reporting. It's letting us know monthly what you're doing so at the end of the year, we can provide awards. The Excellent Superior Outstanding Award, of course you'll hear more about that. But to me, the best part of that is, if you're floundering, if you're new, if you're thinking, okay, what, should, what might we be doing this year? What, what are we forgetting to do? Well, print out the CAR-1. It tells you everything you get credit for. Um, it's also a good reminder to, oh, we're already doing a lot of this. Maybe, and this is, thank goodness it's few, but there's still a couple of holdouts out there, chapters that aren't participating in the CAR-1 program, and that's silly. You need to get credit for what you're doing so that when you come to the annual conference, you can get rewarded. So, uh, if we're doing the whole meal analogy, I say, hey, get your hands on this car one before you start to put your meals together. So, let's look at ingredients. First thing you wanna do is line your pan. Uh, without executive management input and support, your cake is not going to rise, trust me. Um, Self-rising flour isn't gonna work either. The best chapters reach for the cake flour. They make sure to seek out executive management engagement and keep it on the shelf. Keep replenishing it. Keep talking to it. Do not let it get old. Stay in contact with your senior leaders. Why? Because they ask the WIFM questions. What's in it for me to have a chapter? What's in it for me to support the chapter? So you got to make sure they know what's going on. All right, in terms of ingredient, ingredients. Um, I already talked about HR and training. They are in charge of performance management, organizational development, and culture. Your job is to support them and partner with them. 
They need to see you as a plus. I have never run into an HR executive who has all the resources, financial or otherwise, that he or she needs. So you want them to go, I'm glad we have the chapter. Maybe they can take on some things for us because maybe the budget acts has fallen or they're doing other things, especially when everybody gets back to work. HR is probably gonna be crazy. All right, what do you, gotta go back in the pantry. I'm lucky, the house I bought has a completely separate pantry. And when you, I give people tours, I'm like, oh my God, I would kill to have this. Well, you gotta see it right now. It is so full, I could do, I'm not, I'm not only set for COVID-19, I'm set for COVID-20 if I need it. Um, but you need, um, you gotta have an org chart. Um, get it filled out. Um, officer training and mentoring, we already talked about that. That's all part of transitioning. Publish your goals and objectives. You know, if you do a newsletter, if you've got a website, wherever, let people know what it is you're about. You would be surprised how many people I have found over the years with NMA who work for an organization and they know there's this management club, God forbid you start using that title, and they're not really sure what's going on. We need to be able to publish, plus you get to hold yourself accountable. And the same goes with the budget. You're collecting people's dues. They're paying to belong. So they need to know where the money's going. Um, submit your NMA membership renewal forms to us. We don't know who's in your chapter if you don't tell us. And all of you know, working with Robin is a complete pleasure. Um, so she will handle all your questions about that. And the same goes for election results. Um, it's really difficult when someone says, well, I'm not on, don't seem to be on the mailing list. And we go look and go, well, no one's told us that you're the new PD chairman. So you got to do your part here. And speaking of budget, I got to do, I got to do a little, um, uh, a little promo here. You know, we're not unlike some of your organizations. You know, we've been closed down. Um, we're not getting any non-dues income. We're not selling any courses. We're not selling any awards. Um, so there's no new, no non-dues income right now. And I know some of you have called in and you've chatted with me, you've chatted with Sue and Robin especially, and said, <clears throat> we had to leave so quickly, um, I left without the chapter checkbook. Not good. Uh, but we understand. Just let us know. But I would say, you know, April 30th is this week. <coughs> if you're able to get your chapter dues in when, on Monday when you're back paying attention to things, it would help us out, to be perfectly honest, because we're running a little, little tight with chapters not able to, uh, some of them not able to pay their dues. So uh, this month we'd ask you if you can help out, please do. All right, let's go to the professional development shelf. Um, the B3 form. Uh, Deborah will talk about that today. That's just the, the you're officially requesting to grant continuing education units for your chapter. What is that PD plan of action? Do people know what's coming down the road? Are you varying your PD offerings? Um, you get executive management to participate. Um, I've got a couple chapters right now that are doing book clubs and senior management is choosing the books. And then people get together once every couple of weeks and you know talk about the last five chapters they've read or whatever. Um, that's great. A lot of executives, well, they'll even run a program for you, but you have to ask. Um, very few people on Mahogany Road will turn you down, but they're busy. So you gotta ask them ahead of time and they wanna be in front of your employees. Um, you know, you're all one team. Uh, same goes for certified manager. We'll talk about that this afternoon. Um, I know Sue and I are both certified managers. We sat, we took the courses. We actually team taught a few years ago. Um, and there's a new um, a certified supervisor program that Deborah will introduce this afternoon. You know, we have our new facility skills courses um, that are available. Um, that's the one thing we really start selling after the first of the year. So give that some thought. Deborah will talk about it. It's on the website. Same for, for building virtual teams. <coughs> and that last bullet, HR linkages. Um, those are the essential oils I mentioned in the last slide. All right, from the communications covered. Um, chapter newsletters. They can be printed, they can be electronic. Um, they are of great value, especially when you're trying to promote what's going on. So utilize the chapter newsletter 
as um, a chance to um, promote what it is you're doing and make sure you get somebody in the graphics department on your team because um, those people are the ones that can save your decks. Um, and in those, remind people of professional development activities. You can't just announce things. It's got to be marketed. You got to remind people. Um, you know, I, I know we drive you all nuts here when we're doing our, probably doing our webinars every month, uh, we send out reminders. But every time we do, we get a lot of people that forgot to register earlier and they sign up. Um, we have people sign up to get the reminder the day before. That's fine. Chapter website. Okay, this is a real bone of contention. Some of your chapter websites were last updated when Herbert Hoover was in the White House. So some of you need to address that. If your chapter website isn't updated, close it down. Because if someone's getting ready to check into, uh, want to learn a little bit more about your chapter, maybe they haven't joined yet, if they call that thing up, and they can tell it hasn't been updated in a couple of years. That does not, um, uh, it's just not good. So um, make sure your chapter members know how to link into the national organization. That's been one of the big shifts in NMA in, in the 194 years I've worked here, is that goods and services used to be delivered almost entirely at the local level. Today, like all associations, um, members will check in with the national organization. I know we're looking at um, doing some blogs and um, having some benef additional benefits available to people 24 seven from home. Or as I always say, they can log on in their bunny slippers and uh, pull up a webinar that we did last month. Maybe you're on vacation or you just couldn't make it. Well, we post them, so they're there. Um, let us know what you're doing for our own newsletter, Anime Break Time. We'd love to get that stuff. Um, so that we can promote your people and promote your programs. So um, if you got a Facebook page, blog, Twitter, um, you know, when we hired Daryl, one of his strengths is, you know, when I was checking references, someone said, oh my God, he's a social media guru. He really knows what he's doing. Well, that's true. We figured that out already. So it is how a huge percentage of your members like to get information. You know, you may have white hair like me and the thought of tweeting kind of makes you want to gag. Um, I get that. But, you know, younger people, uh, they just look at things a little bit differently. And you got to reach, you got to go where they are. All right, your association development cooler. What, well, reach down and what do you find in there? Um, I mentioned earlier, do you have a plan? Are you leveraging our 2020 membership campaign where the $20 registration fee is reduced to 10 bucks? And you can pick, you can have a membership campaign any two months of your choosing where you, you know, and it's really bizarre. I, I had to be convinced of this at first and then finally when they hit me over the head with it and I saw the results, it's amazing. When you tell someone they can save $10, they'll join. Um, I don't know if we're just all cheap or what it is, um, but that $10 savings will make a difference, trust me. So if you have your own marketing materials, we've got some here we can help you with, um, that we can personalize for you. Um, but you know, instead of just asking someone, you need to join our chapter, put something in their hand, something that looks sharp and crisp. Um, when when yeah, Brian stupid. comes on as our new executive director, he's gonna be spending a lot of time looking for, you know, doing new chapter development. Well, you can really help us by giving us good leads. And by qualified, I mean, not just driving down the highway, though, that's a big building. No, you on it in. But rather paying attention to your brother-in-law, your sister, your next door neighbor. Maybe they work in a hospital. Maybe they work in a transportation hub. You, people in your church, you are so amazingly connected. And um, you need to keep that in mind and say, hey, Adam A, um, I have a link. I know somebody that can help Brian or anybody on staff get in the door. You would help us up so much. And then something that's buried, you know, one of the best things, way to keep a secret in any organization, oh, okay. is to have a new program and then bury it in your policies and procedure manual. We actually do have a chapter growth incentive plan where if your chapter will help us get a new one and then stay on board through their chartering process, we'll give you $25 for each new member. 
So, you know, if they have a, you bring out a chapter of 100 members, that's 2,500 bucks uh, that you have for your chapter budget. So keep that in mind. All right, related to that is image. Um, try and get local chapter press coverage when you can. Um, a lot of smaller town newspapers, uh, they're looking for stuff. They're looking for information. Um, and if you don't know how to write a news brief, trust me, uh, somebody in your organization does. Um, when was the last time your chapter presented the Silver Knight or a leadership award? Traditionally, chapters tend to do that during Management Week in America, which is the first week in June, which this it can be any week you choose, uh, especially this year. Gonna, most chapters are probably going to scoot it uh, up a little bit. Uh, but it's a way to recognize key people in your organization. And, you know, after this whole pandemic thing, um, there are probably people in your organization or in your community, for that matter. You know, a, a lot of chapters forget that our NMA awards, you can present to anyone. So if you've got some heroes, if you've got some folks out there in your community who have really made a difference, and use your head, bring them in, introduce them to NMA, present them with an award, thank them for it. And the same goes for your member of the year. Um, if you have a chapter member of the year, and you better, um, submit his or her name and the paperwork to win the national member of the year. No national member, every national member of the year we have has probably been the chapter's member of the year that year. So, um, you know, you don't, nobody has to be from a big chapter to win that award. So, um, also in terms of nominations, we encourage you to nominate your executive for the Executive of the Year Award or the Hall of Fame, either one or both. Um, ordinarily, those nominations are due June 1. Right now, we've moved it to June 15. And then, of course, part of Image is hopefully you have an executive evening, a top management night, something that gives your key people on Mahogany Row a chance to do face-to-face -face interaction with your chapter members. Um, I think it's safe to say that almost every chapter reports that's their most popular program of the year. All right, moving things along. Um, make sure you have a speech contest plan. Um, if you're doing the leadership speech contest with high school students, Matt will be talking a lot about that. Youth programs, community events, be ingenuous. One of the things I suggest to a lot of chapters is if you've got a CEO <clears throat> and he or she has a spouse, chances are because of their position, they're active in the community. So they're out there and they serve on boards and find out where those are. Because trust me, if you've got a CEO whose spouse is really into big brothers and big sisters um, and the chapter decides to support that as well, um, you will get a lot of smiley faces for that one um, because you're hitting a hot button with someone in the family. So um, moving along here, what else? New member orientation. Nothing worse than bringing a new member on board than he or she shows up for the first meeting and they're just kind of floundering. Um, you need to have a program. We've got a guide for it. You can download it, um, but are you orienting them? So make sure you're also communicating with your assigned national director or associate director. These are men and women who serve on the national board to bring your interests forward and to let us know if you are having problems. Um, I mentioned it before, make sure that the membership roster, um, Robin gives you a chance every month to keep that updated. And we'd ask you to consider supporting a national director or associate director from your chapter. <clears throat> um, nobody's as smart as all of us, so the more people from your companies that we have serving on the board, the better. <clears throat> and the last one, not every meeting has to be a meeting. Um, I want to do a, a shout out to Blue Cross Blue Shield of, to, of Michigan in Detroit. They started a program, oh, gosh, it might even be four years ago now or longer, uh, where they have um, an off-site post-work day event that's entirely social. And they go through, each executive sponsors it. 
and they're not buying drinks for everybody, um, but they might spring for hors or d'oeuvres and whatnot. But people can just get together after work, after a long day, and network before they get in a long line of traffic to go home. Maybe go you know down the street or so from from where you work and just enjoy one another's company. And I know many times that Blue Cross um, it's always it's always become a competition between and among executives as to who can get the most people out. So it works. Trust me. Um, so before baking your thing, are you surveying your members? Are you getting feedback? Are you meeting regularly with your advisors? You know, this is like a performance review. Perfor people that do performance reviews once a year, in my opinion, should be shot. Uh, that's just my opinion, um, because you should be meeting with your employees all the time and, and be understanding of what their needs are and what's going on and how you can help. Same goes for meeting with your advisors. They're busy, so they can't know everything and they can't remember everything, so make sure that you um, take a few minutes to meet with your advisor. Years ago, I had somebody from a chapter in California come to me and goes, I've been trying to get in to, for an hour or so to meet with our CEO and I can't get past the gatekeeper. And I just wanted to hit him in the forehead. I'm like, an hour meeting with a CEO? Are you crazy? Um, I said, that gatekeeper would lose her job or his job um, if they did that. So, you know, you have to be respectful of their time. Uh, and then, you know, make sure that you and all of you that are on the phone call today <clears throat> are familiar with NMA's website, NMA1.org. There is a deliberate effort to put everything on that website that we think you might need. And if you can't find something you're looking for, let us know and we'll take care of it. <clears throat> Lastly, make sure you're providing ongoing recognition for everybody. All right, so we got this picture. What's going on here? Well, obviously these people are having fun. <clears throat> They're getting to know one another, maybe after a hard day's work. You know, the big buzz today is employee engagement. It's been the buzz for what, a couple, three years? <clears throat> well, employee engagement begins with people getting to know one another. And you do that on a social level. You don't need to apologize for that. So that's one of the things that the chapter can bring. You don't trust people until you get to know them. So the chapter can help people get to know one another. All right, <clears throat> so before putting it in the oven, ask yourselves, is NMA the place to be? And I'm serious with this one. Um, it's back to your chapter brand. You know, look at who belongs to your chapter. Is it too centered in one division, one department, one floor, one whatever? Is it full of geezers like me? Or does it have a really good mix of people who belong? Um, I think it's the best question as you're going back and as you're trying to re-up the game. It's like, okay, how cool are we? And if you're surrounded by ERGs, uh, you know, those nasty employee resource groups. Um, set yourselves apart. How are you differentiating? Or are you working with them? Whatever it is, find a way to make all this work. So then, you know, simply cook according to directions and await your masterpiece. Because nurturing a chapter is an ongoing process. You change officers, you have new challenges and opportunities. So you really have two main tasks, to prepare all your officers to do their jobs well, and then to create a chapter atmosphere that brings favor and distinction to everybody that belongs and everything you're trying to do. But what happens when things go awry? This is where your leadership chops are tested. But it's such a good opportunity to showcase your ability to assess a situation and develop a recovery plan. So how do you lead a chapter in challenging times? Well, you know your chapter, you know your members. You should be in touch with senior leadership. I suggest you adopt a no guts, no glory mindset. Almost every time I've done that in my life, uh, some benefit has accrued. Once in a while you blow it. But 
more often than not, somebody's waiting on somebody to say, let's go for it. And certainly, <clears throat> you can make working from home work for you. Now, everybody has approached our current realities differently, and everybody's affected by it differently. So you either get your act together, and I love that, I love, found this picture of the lady, her mask with, uh, and the computer in front of her, or the other lady on the other side, who doesn't seem to be coping very well and gets overwhelmed. Guess what? You get to choose. We always get to choose our mindsets. So let's look at some tips. And once again, Michelle asked me to do this. And I'm like, okay, I don't want to be condescending. and I don't want to assume that you don't already know most of this stuff. But like any fundamental, sometimes it's helpful, it's helpful to step back. So, um, you know, when you work in an office, you have a daily routine of getting ready and commuting. And it helps your brain get ready for the day. I know for me, I even had trouble remembering to take my meds the first week or so we were home. Because my routine in the morning was, I kept a little pill box there. Yes, okay, I own all one up. I got one of those suckers. I kept it right by the little light on my kitchen counter. And I turned out the light before I grabbed my car keys. So the pills were sitting there and I'd, I'd take whatever I need to take every morning. And uh, all of a sudden when I wasn't leaving the house, um, I forgot to take them. I actually went two days in a row, and I'm on Coumadin, which was really bright to do two days in a row. So, uh, so there are triggers. So when you're working remotely, get your own start to day triggers. And you may just need a workspace. Uh, that could be the key. You know, if you're one of these people that can sit down and be productive anywhere, curl up on a sofa, have a laptop in your lap, well, that's great. But I think a lot of us need more structure. So uh, I know I found for me having a designated workspace, um, it helps your brain get you in the right place. Um, how about distractions? Well, that's one of the biggest challenges, I think. Uh, I'm single and live alone, so I don't have a lot of people distractions, particularly. Um, but to keep your mood in the right, uh, keep your brain in the right mode, um, try to avoid doing non-work tasks during your work time. For example, schedule a separate time to do laundry instead of tackling it while you're finishing a work presentation. Um, a simple to-do list can work wonders. You know, and as you create this list, think big long-term goals, but put smaller ones on there, because checking off smaller goals lets you know that, yeah, you're working from home, but you're making progress. And work feels a lot more doable, but it's not one giant task. All right, uh, working remotely requires a schedule. Um, except at home, you're the only one, mainly, uh, holding yourself accountable. Um, it doesn't mean your entire day has to be work only. And, um, and I know some of you are working long, I know a lot of people who say they're actually working longer hours. Hopefully you're taking a break during the time to refresh yourself, mentally, physically, and emotionally. Um, so take into account other commitments in your life as you're scheduling your day. Um, if you've got a schedule, make it visible. Make it visible to your coworkers so they know when you're free to meet and when you've blocked out work and personal times. It's also a good idea to make sure that friends and family understand your schedule and, and respect it because it's not a time to drop by for a chat. You're working from home and it's not always easy. Find a way to make sure working from home isn't just a solo experience. I really like the guy on the right because <coughs> he's saying hi to his members. I, I will tell you what has kept me sane is that every morning at nine o'clock, Daryl, Sue, Robin, and I have a Zoom meeting. And we've had a lot of good morning laughs, which is important, guys. And then we go about scheduling our day. And I haven't polled the other three but I think we were actually more in sync when we've been doing this than maybe when we're in the office, at least certain days. Um, so, you know, use chat apps like Google Hangouts. Um, if you have to have an official meeting, and you gotta do that sometimes, you know, for brainstorming or really getting into details of things, uh, then you have a, a video conference. But make sure that you are really um, collaborating and communicating. So what else? Um, Michelle also said, well, can you talk about how to be an effective leader in difficult times? And I'm like, are you going to pay me any more for doing that? And she said, no. So 
<coughs> for free, assuming I don't choke to death, <coughs> let's go over five tips for becoming an effective chapter leader. And I'm looking at the clock and we're running out of time. Number one, master your own fear. fear. Um, anytime we go through a situation like this, people are, hope, are, are fearful of the unknown, but just believe that you can get through it. Respect and love your mission. Uh, every association has one. So make sure that you're doing what's best for the chapter, um, not what's best for you. So keep your personal interests out of it when you get back. <clears throat> Be prepared. Uh, a good Boy Scout friend here. A good, a good leader reacts quickly. An exceptional leader surveys the horizon and prepares for certain possibilities so that when difficult times approach, they are ready. You don't know if your next challenge will be internal or external, but hopefully we've all learned from this to have some contingency plans. Keep learning. Uh, I hope everybody's finding time <coughs> to do things for themselves to keep their knowledge and skills up to date. If nothing else, consider what you've learned these past few weeks. How has it changed you? What would you be doing differently when you return to work? What may well change when you get back? And then like your good friend, Patty LaBelle, get some attitude, you know? Um, good leadership knows what's going on in people's hearts in the chapters. They're good at it. You sense people and you understand what real value means. It's also about relationships. And you have to model, and I know Lynn's gonna talk about this, you have to model good leadership behavior. So even in the darkest of times, winning leaders have attitude. Lastly, keep perspective in your sense of humor. You gotta do it. Um, um, there again, I think we're all different, but for me, being able to see the funny side of a situation really helps when you're kind of getting buried in it. So, um, what are some effective chapter leaders currently doing? Well, we asked you in an email that went out, I don't know, about a month ago, to kind of tell us some things you're doing, and many of you did. So Jay down at Lockheed Martin Marietta said, we've got a, a bi-weekly mi meeting with him. Uh, we held a virtual offsite. <coughs> We're even reviewing scholarship applications for high school students virtually. <coughs> In PD, we're holding mentoring roundtable. We're brainstorming ideas. Can we offer PMP and CM classes virtually, do it online? They're community activities. They collected items virtually via uh, online store orders to support the food bank. Um, and they're looking for ways to bolster their LinkedIn and WhatsApp appearance app, apps. Um, Brian down at Boeing Fort Walton Beach, Florida says, our spirits are high. People seem to be enjoying working from home. We sent links to a couple of anime webinars to all of our people to say, hey, check these out. Because remember, all of our webinars are posted on the website. It's an old bunny slipper thing. Um, <coughs> Brian's been sending out leadership articles as he finds them, making sure the board is communicating via email, instant, instant messaging, and <gasps> guess what? They even pick up the phone. Um, he was getting ready for a WebEx meeting, and of course they were planning to be on board today. Uh, down at Nokia, and this one took two pages. Um, they're doing leadership team meetings via WebEx. Um, they're GMM prep meetings, two to three days prior to GMM, they're doing those. Um, they were sending, you know, uh, the general membership meetings are doing virtually. I thought it was cool that there's, uh, uh, doing them for 90 minutes, they do an open video for the president and speakers. They're making sure to invite non-Nokia members to GMMs and, and then following up. And they're keeping our webinars in front of their employees. They're doing virtual classes from Udacity. They have a book club meeting virtually. They're keeping dues payments to Animate Current. Thank you. <laughs> a big thank you. Sue's in the background cheering. I can hear her. And <laughs> Nokia's going to send in its dues on Monday. Um, and they say across the board, they're using all kinds of platforms. Um, Leah, it's Lucky Martin Space. Um, and, and actually, I didn't know this until uh, Elizabeth Thomas from Florida forwarded me an um, email that went out to their chapter of members. Um, but they said, we hope to provide at least some novel resources and our ideas to help you in both your personal 
and professional development and leadership development. So that, and I saw the email, um, I've got it printed out here. Um, they grouped everything into skill building, exercise, important while we're off, I've not been good about that at all, meditation and self-care, and then just miscellaneous. They also set up a forum on SharePoint for everybody. And Collins Leadership in Richardson, <coughs> they too are using virtual tools. Um, they're partnering with the company to help out in terms of um, cross spreading the virus and not spreading it out. Been using Google Handouts. And Shelby says, I'll admit that working from home a few days a week has allowed me to catch up on some older chapter actions. So I hope that's the case for all of you. So uh, I want to thank you for joining us this morning. Stay home, stay healthy, stay connected, wash those hands, and we want to see you in Greenville, South Carolina <coughs> in October for our annual conference. Greenville is a gem of a city. Everything's within walking distance from the Hyatt Regency down in the lower right-hand corner. You can walk to bars and restaurants and shops and walk down to their, their this is like little San Antonio, if you will, down there on the, they have their own little river walk. It's just the coolest city ever. So we're gonna have a good time and we look forward to seeing you there. And guess what? I am done. So Daryl, I'll let you call up the next one. And that's going to be uh, Lynn Schneider, and um, I'll introduce her when we're right there. Go. Um, give everybody five minutes if any of you need to take a quick break. Now's a good time to do so. And thank you. I've enjoyed being with you. Hey, Daryl, this is Lynn Schneider. I just want to do a quick sound check before we get started from our break in five minutes. Yeah, Lynn, I heard you, heard you very well. So. All right. Perfect. I'll be on mute until uh, we get started in a few minutes. Thank okay, you. I'll have your screen, your uh, slides up here in just a second. All right, great.
this way, so we're not going to take the same. Oh, okay, good. We're on meeting now, so we're not. All right, according to my clock, it's 12 o'clock here in Dayton, Ohio, which means it's nine o'clock <clears throat> in Everett, Washington, where our next presenter is coming from. I have the distinct pleasure. First of all, I personally asked her to do this workshop and she agreed and she really didn't even hold anything over my head. Um, so Lynn Schneider and I have been friends since she was chapter president at Boeing Fort Walton Beach in Fort Walton Beach, Florida. And Lynn, actually, I went to Fort Walton Beach, and that was the first time I ever made it to, um, what's the restaurant? Fish, the fish, uh, the Bang Bang Shrimp Place. Oh, yes, Bonefish Grill. Yeah, Bonefish Grill. It was the first time I'd ever been to one when we were down there for a meeting. And then we went to Lynn's home, where she had all the chapter officers there. But she didn't stay in Fort Walton Beach. She moved to Huntsville, Alabama. And she dropped me a note and said, Gus, who's in Huntsville, maybe we can get a chapter going here after I get my feet wet and get the lay of the land. So she did and we did. And now Lynn is on assignment for Boeing's airspace, living and working in Everett, Washington. And she is undoubtedly today the person to be the most envied because she and her husband Actually, you know, they're out there now for a couple years and they found this amazing little cottage overlooking Puget Sound and they can go outside and watch the whale. Well, actually, you can see them watch the whales play. And I am so jealous because the rest of us don't have that view by a long shot. So it probably helps keep Lynn sane and serene and she is both. And it is my pleasure to introduce Lynn Schneider, Certified Manager, for the next presentation. Thanks, Steve. I really appreciate that. I uh, do bring good tidings and greetings from the Pacific Northwest. It is one of the most beautiful places on the planet. And uh, over my right shoulder, you may see some uh, what looks like coral and fish. And that's a nice segue into the next slide. One of the things that I definitely wanted to uh, talk with you all about today is relationships, and I'd like for you to get to know me a little bit better. So um, Daryl is gonna be clicking through the slides for me, and oh, you can tell from that last one I need a haircut. But uh, that, there we go. Yeah, don't we miss all of those luxuries? Uh, haircuts and styles and barbers and the things that we weren't expecting we would miss so much in this season. But what you see on the screen here is something that really is uh, intentional. It is meant for us to take what we learned from Steve, a broad overview, and now to close the aperture just a little bit and move our focus and attention into what it means to be a chapter president and vice president. Uh, we'll be looking at the other chapter officer roles and responsibilities throughout the day and tomorrow. But for those of you that have accepted new um, roles and responsibilities in the area of chapter president and chapter vice president, one of the things that I wanted to do was to, as a national director, give you the opportunity to get to know me. I haven't met any, um, uh, I haven't met some of you, and some of you I've known for many, many years, but I think it's important in your role is to just let people get one step closer in a virtual way in this season. But uh, my husband and I, as well as uh, my daughter, son-in-law, and our grandson, Owen, there, we're all open water divers. Owen got his certification at the age of 12, and our granddaughter there uh, will be working on her certification. You'll also see me paragliding there in the uh, area south of Salzburg, Austria. I like adventure. I like family. Um, being connected to people is very important to me. And I suspect because you accepted the role of president and vice president, it's important to you as well. So please, I invite you to let people get again that virtual one step closer to you and so from all of the ingredients that Steve gave us, I'm gonna focus in on the relationship ingredient across 
uh, the organization that you work in and this new role and responsibility that you have in the organization that you will be serving as a chapter president or vice president. So I'm um, very happy to introduce you to myself and to my family, and I'm ready to go to the next slide. All right, you saw these um, guides in the presentation, and what I want to re remind you is, is that these resources are available to you. They are specifically tailored for the activities that you'll be responsible for as a president or vice president, and what really is impressive to me is that you have access to this 24 seven. We are definitely in a digital age. And so no matter what time of day you need information or a resource, if um, someone is not a living person is not immediately available to you, you can always reach back to these basic guidebooks and find information that's going to be meaningful to you. So let's go ahead to the next slide. I'm a very literal person, I'm a very visual person, so I wanted you to literally see the website. I anticipate that most of you are familiar with this, but if you are not, you certainly can go up to the top right corner there and you will find the pathway, and I'm going to glance away from the screen because I've got my charts up here as well on my um, work computer, and that way I can make sure I'm giving you good directions. And so, yes, that's correct. It's there up at the right-hand side, and there's the path. You'll go to Guide and President, and then Chapter Council Guidebook, and that will literally open up into all of the uh, guides for each and every chapter officer position and other roles and responsibilities. Now, one thing that I found incredibly useful was to actually look at the roles and responsibilities of all of the chapter officers because as chapter president and vice president this is information that you're going to want to understand so that you can bolster the people on your team you can provide information and resources you can actually point them to information that they may have overlooked simply because you've taken the time and it does just take a few minutes to go look at each and every a uh, bit of information that's out there within those guides so that you can understand all the roles and responsibilities, at least to a working level, and then you can collaborate with your officers and committee chairs. So just cannot overemphasize the value of the information that's readily available for you as a chapter president and vice president. So let's go ahead to the next slide. And you'll notice that uh, I don't put a lot of information on slides simply because I want to engage with you and talk with you through each of these uh, rather like a fireside chat. I think I've gotten a little reputation of um, the idea that we're just having a cup of coffee and we're just talking and relating to one another on a very personal level. Again, this is the uh, my leadership style. And it's certainly one that um, I'm interested in providing to you as a resource and appreciate your indulgence as I uh, refer back to my slides um, and share information with you this way. All right, Daryl, let's go ahead to the next slide. Now, just like your company has a specific purpose, just like NMA does, and um, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna turn my video off so it's less distracting me talking and let you guys uh, just follow along with my voice, and then I'll come back to you at the end, okay? All right, so just like your company has a specific purpose, NMA also has a purpose, and you have a purpose as well. Uh, your purpose is incredibly unique and it carries great meaning, not only for you, but for your chapter. It's going to be multifaceted. You are definitely gonna grow in ways that you never expected, uh, in ways that perhaps you never contemplated. You may actually find yourself acting as a planner, a timekeeper, creative director, organizer, cheerleader, encourager, there's gonna be more than ever. You may have to be more direct in the way that you 
shape ideas into actionable plans. You're going to have to be the person that helps the team understand deadlines and follow up. That's a critical ingredient, as Steve would say. Your environment may become incredibly dynamic. You'll refine the way you communicate in the written word during conference calls, even during video teleconferencing. You'll have to learn to check the mute button, unmute. All of these things are gonna be critical. You'll learn about delegation. I promise you, I'm confident that you can do this by yourself, but that's not good leadership. That doesn't grow the team around you. Even as a new, president, I would encourage you to begin looking at your next year's plan. What are your roles going to be? Are you going to stay on or are you going to hand off in a succession plan to the standing vice president? That delegation is going to be a very, very important part of the way you lead. Another thing that's meaningful is that as you observe your vice president and chapter officers and committee chairs, you're going to observe from your point of view new and emerging strengths. You may also find some uh, emerging weaknesses that you didn't expect, but then you're going to help shape those into strengths in a meaningful way. As you fulfill the roles and responsibilities of chapter president and vice president, you'll just continue to learn and the organization, the structure around you, the people around you are going to want to see and watch how you do it so they can also learn and begin taking new steps in their next roles within the chapter and the organization. So I can't overemphasize again the power and value of following up. So appreciate um, and really want to just Express if, if, if we haven't paused yet long enough to do so, let me do that right now. We are so excited for you and your new roles and responsibilities. Congratulations. Congratulations. Just take a moment and let that wash over you um, as we begin to talk about team. And that's our next slide, Daryl. Okay, so what I did is I looked at and thought about who is my team. When I was leading the folks down in Fort Walton Beach and give a shout out to my folks down there and standing at the steering committee and the chapter in Huntsville, giving a shout out to my peeps down there, I just wanted to think about, and I want you to do that too. As a matter of fact, if you are at a desk and you have a paper and pen, Using the, the teammates that I show there, go ahead and list out any additional teammates that you have. Let me give you just a second to do that. Now it's been said many times that there is no I in team, and technically that is correct. You do not spell the word team with the letter I. However, I will tell you that while you have extraordinary support all around you, your team needs you to focus on the I, meaning yourself, so that you can lead, inspire, encourage, mentor, and actually offer your best. Do you realize, have you really stopped for 30 seconds like we just did to contemplate how big your team is? Uh, you may have more members on your team than you've really thought about because many times we think about things in the construct of corporate America. But again, there are more people surrounding you, supporting you, and that have ideas that you may need um, as we enter into a season of non-traditional ways of doing business. Uh, the people that you are writing down on your list, in addition to the ones that I have there, these people are for you and they want you to succeed. They want to see you flourish and they have a unique experience and life circumstances that will contribute to the high powered team that you're building. Now, as the leader of a team, 
They are counting on you to lead by example. Steve talked about some of these things and I cannot um, or will not validate whether I have on work slacks or my pajama bottoms because that doesn't matter today. But I assure you showing up when we are all back at work, pajama bottoms will never be acceptable at work. I'm pretty sure that's the case, but they are counting on you to take care of yourself. And one of the ways that you can do that is by taking care of them. Create opportunities for connection. You will definitely be amazed at what a one or two minute phone call will do, just reaching out and connecting with someone. Even an instant message if your uh, work uh, systems allow that kind of connection. I know at the Boeing company, we have an instant message um, feature on our system that allows us to communicate with any other Boeing employee around the world. And so that's a great way to stay connected. Now, um, as you're finding new ways to do what we've been doing for years, one of the areas, actually three things that um, I want us to look at are what I call the triple E, the three things that people expect from you as their president and vice president. And those are energy, enthusiasm, and encouragement. If you'd like to go to the next slide, please. All right, now, from my point of view, this topic is so timely in light of COVID-19. So let's look at these questions together. Well, you can see the questions. Take a moment and read those. And think about it from the what I'll call the old way and what's going to need to be the new way of how we do business. Now, the old way usually included breakfast or a lunch meeting right after work meeting in a conference room. There was a standard agenda, a guest speaker, possibly a look ahead calendar. And many times there's food, a definite draw for people that are looking for a reason to get to a meeting. Now let's take a look at the next slide, but look at it in the context of COVID-19, okay? Now this is from our Boeing Rocket City Leadership Association in Huntsville, and this was from 2017, and I will promise you this was a very good year. Uh, not pictured here was a really fun meeting that featured an internationally acclaimed chef, uh, Jimmy Boyce. Uh, the membership meetings were exciting. People were talking about them. We were having fun and we were learning about leadership in a variety of ways. Now I called it again the old way, but let's go back to that previous slide, Daryl, and think about those questions again. How do you build excitement and energy for your next literal chapter meeting? You know, May 2020. Have you found a way to meet? Have you cracked the code on meaningful interaction using the various available meeting platforms? Let's face it, folks. I'm not sure what normal looks like anymore, but this is what I do know. People still want to connect. People still want to advance their careers. People still want to do a great job for their families and for themselves. And you, as chapter presidents and vice presidents, are pivotal to their success. And you know what? They might have just the thing that's needed for the chapter you represent but you have to stay connected and you do that by reaching down into your own resources, your own energy, your own enthusiasm, and your own encouragement. Now naturally it's not going to be easy, but stay with me, okay? All right, Daryl, we're ready to jump two slides down to the challenges. All right, now Steve did talk about this and I just wanted to linger a bit longer because let me assure you, if um, we were not in the middle of a pandemic, all of us would be either in a challenge or the next challenge would be coming. That's life and that's leadership. In my experience, challenges tend to originate from three places. 
external, internal, and unexpected. So of course the external is things that you may not be able to control, uh, lack of funding, opposition from others, a change in priorities, there are business issues, but then there's the internal, personal matters that influence your leadership. Things may or may not be even contemplated at this time. You may be moving to a new job. You may have personal insecurities that originated from something that was spoken over you when you were eight years old. There may be something with confidence. Maybe you haven't um, built the relationships with your officers or committed chairs that allow you to delegate to them. Maybe you're just impatient. Those are internal things that we can most of the time control or influence. But then again, there's unexpected things. And as mentioned, a pandemic resulting in downsizing, restructuring, new technologies. Again, the life cycle of your chapter, maybe it's in a downward momentum and they're looking to you for energy to revive and revitalize. Sometimes the plans that we make just don't work. Maybe it just wasn't the right choice and so now we have to focus on course correcting. And there are uncharted waters in front of us and for each and every one of us that's different. But the relationship foundations that you're building now early in this year in these most unusual times are going to be what bring you through that. Now certainly acknowledging the challenging side of leading a chapter will actually help you prepare for the challenges. And again, let me just pause and connect with you and say, you can do this. And I'm happy to also report that chapter leadership is not all challenges. Actually, chapter leadership is also full of wonderful rewards. And let me assure you this, what we are doing today, connecting with each of you is more fueling than so, so much that I deal with on a regular basis. I, I'm a senior contracts person at the Boeing company and assure, let me assure you, federal acquisition regulations are not fueling, but this is very much so. Now, did you see the uh, interesting thing here? Um, some of you may be working, stop that right now and look at the screen. Uh, some of you may have left the room, come back, come back, take a look at the screen. It says rewards at the top. Now pop up uh, where we just were, Daryl, would you? Did you see it? Okay, go back to rewards. Did you notice it? Now in the interest of time, I'll just tell you. This was a breakthrough moment for me. It hit me like a ton of bricks in the most unexpected way while I was preparing these slides. It's simple. It's so simple. Challenges and rewards are the same coin. And just as a coin has heads or tails, leadership has challenges and rewards. And the difference is you. It's you and your team. So as noted in the last slide, it says the same thing, external, internal, unexpected. Being part of something bigger than yourself, whether at work, at home, or in your faith community, in my view is more rewarding than anything. In your role as president and vice president, let me just say you were made for this. You have demonstrated behaviors and values and work ethic and skills and knowledge that people believed in you and put you in a place of leadership over them along with your vice president and they're counting on you so again i offer my heartfelt congratulations to each and every one of you so as we move on to the next slide, our time together is just, I'm, I'm afraid I may uh, pull a Steve and go just a couple of minutes over. I'm gonna come back to you on video now and uh, just give you the opportunity to reflect on the resources and also ask questions.
questions. I noted the NMA1.org. Uh, you have your national and associate directors. You have the home office staff, uh, your parent company, your executive sponsor. So all of these resources are available. Um, as I prepared these slides, I knew that there would be a lot of nuts and bolts recipes for the tangible part of leadership. What I wanted to focus on today was the soft side, the emotional intelligence side, the, the ways that we connect and effect the people that we are in leadership with and those that we're leading. So I hope that you found some of this, um, these concepts and ideas, these softer skills beneficial to you and also want to invite you to reach out to me and other national directors so that we can help you from the range of experience that we have in being just a good member, in being a chapter committee chair, in being an officer or moving into the role of president and vice president. So my name is Lynn Schneider. I appreciate this opportunity to hang out with you guys today and I uh, welcome your questions. Hi Lynn. It's Marcelo from Nokia Leadership Association in Dallas. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm the current president of NLA, and uh, I'm, I'm, I was invited the last year to took this position. And I see that a lot of people, because we are volunteers, right? And it's really difficult to find people sometimes to fill the main uh, officer roles, like president, vice president, treasurer, and uh, and also secretary. These four roles is more difficult to find people because they uh, may be afraid to take more responsibilities because all of us, we are really busy also with the work. Mm -hmm. And we are coming now for June and we are going to need to replace these four roles again. I think we are doing this uh, yearly. And uh, But do you have any <laughs> clues on that? How to really pick up the people and say, okay, no, it's not so difficult. Of course, you need to put your, a lot of time in, on this, but, uh, and uh, even uh, can the, the offices from one year can continue next year, or do you need to replace everything every year also? That's my I do have a couple of ideas, and that's a great question, Marcelo. Thank you for asking that. Uh, one, I view the, chapter meetings and opportunities as a leadership laboratory. These um, chapters are a way for you to build and enhance skills that you may not otherwise get in your day-to-day -day job. So um, encouraging the membership to see that and inviting them to participate at that level is huge. The other thing I would invite you and your team to look at is your literal structure with your bylaws and what is required and uh, ensure that your entire board is not shifting annually, that you have a rolling. So um, maybe you have a two year president position or even if it's one year, they're staggered. So that this year you're replacing only president and treasurer, next year you replace vice president secretary as the four standard officer positions. So it may be that you just need to take a look at your bylaws and reshape those to be more meaningful and more timely and allow a gradual shift of leadership um, by the nature of how you hold your elections is an idea. But as assuredly, I have never been a formal manager at the Boeing company, but I've had senior uh, level uh, leaders that were on my board and served under me and that would never happen in my day-to-day -day workplace, but because of the structure and the nature of an NMA chapter, you have capacity to be seen and experiment in a very, very safe environment where people want you to succeed. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. Of course, you're welcome. Daryl, I don't know what our flexibility and time is, but um, you, you let me know how many questions we have and then I'll give my uh, parting reminders. Uh, if, if you wanna take one more question, if anyone wants to unmute themselves and ask it, they can do that. 
And then Peter Burns here with Nokia also. And uh, I, I uh, echo the same question that Marcelo had uh, regarding leadership at the uh, McCampus. Uh, a lot of times what I try to do is go talk to those that are um, reluctant and try to encourage them to recognize the fact that they might be the one that's in, in, in that position, but they're not there by themselves because there's a support team behind them. But I do like the the um, the opportunity that you shared about rolling. We, we hadn't done that in the past, and I think that's something we ought to consider. So my question is, um, if you're doing that at your organization, do you have changes in your bylaws or, or documentation in your bylaws that illustrate that, that you can share with us? So at least when we're going through our discussions um, here for the uh, future, we can look at how we can massage ours to, uh, to support that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe that uh, that is the case with uh, BRCLA, Boeing Rocket City Leadership Association. I'm confident that other chapters across the organization nationally would have those resources. So I'm going to um, be very bold and ask Daryl to take that as an action for us to uh, reach out to folks um, during today or tomorrow or within you know, the immediate future to provide some examples of what that would look like. And uh, certainly we don't need to reinvent the wheel, but we can uh, reach up and out to other chapters and organizations within our own community to understand how that's being done, what that looks like, and get some best practices put together. Uh, Daryl, I hope that's okay that I'm giving you an, an, an action. Yeah, we'll get that taken care of. All right, hey, great uh, question, Peter. Thank you so much for that. And one other thought as we're chatting, is that uh, Marcelo and Peter, all of you, uh, let the people know that you're grooming for your succession plan, which is your responsibility as a vice president and president, is to let them know that you're not leaving, you're just moving down so they can move up and you'll be right there alongside them to help and you'll see them during chapter meetings and in the office and you can be there as a resource and help them along, that there's no, there's a safety net and uh, you're there to support them as they take on new roles and responsibilities and you shift what you're doing within the organization. So I know Daryl said we're close, uh, actually we're over time. So there's just one last slide I wanted to share with all of you. And those are important deadlines. Uh, because of the COVID-19, we have made some adjustments, adjustments shifting things to the right uh, so that you can take advantage with your publications contest, your program award entries. You'll see the new dates highlighted there in red. Uh, of course, the annual award nominations for manager of the year, uh, member of the year, these types of awards are also extended to mid-June. And of course, always, always um, submitting your articles to the home office for some uh, publication in our NMA break time are always welcome. So on behalf of the uh, national officers and your national directors, again, thank you so much for letting me be a part of what we're doing today in chapter leadership training. Have a great day and a, a blessed weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Lynn, thank you so much. Great job, as always. We appreciate that. And as Daryl's getting set up for our next presenter, I will go ahead and introduce Shelly Menke. Shelly Menke was our 2019 NMA Chairman of the Board. At that time, she was working for Lockheed Martin between Lockheed Martin Palmdale and Lockheed Martin Fort Worth. She is now working for Northrop Grumman. She has moved from Texas back to California and um, is getting her act together there. Very, very pleased to be back. Um, Shelly has the unique ability to juggle 20,000 tasks at the same time. So when she volunteered today, when she probably needs to finish unpacking and do a lot of things around the house, she's joining us from Palmdale, California to present chapter meetings and programs. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce Shelly Menke. Good morning from sunny California, or good afternoon, depending on your time zone, and welcome to the NMA programs training. Can everybody hear me okay? 
Hello? Yes, yes Shelly, we, yes. yes. we can hear you. Yes. Yes. Okay, I just wanted, I didn't get to do a sound check. Sorry there. Okay, so our program's challenge is to take yet another dull, boring meeting that members feel compelled to attend and turn it into an exciting, thrilling experience that they can't wait to get to and they don't want to leave. What's the first thing to do? Let's try not to call it just a meeting. Let's leave that for business meetings. And if you're having a program, let's get really creative. Remember, people go to meetings all day long, and especially during this COVID. I, I don't even have time to take a potty break at home. It's just amazing. We're putting in 12, 13 hour days here. Let's spice it up. Let's call it a special program or an event if you can. And remember, you need to market the daylights out of it. Don't just announce it. Remember, you're selling a product. You have to generate interest and make people want to come to your meeting. So here's a few questions for y'all. Do you simply announce your upcoming events or do you really, really market them? How do you get the word out? How do you use technology to make people more aware? Does anyone want to share any of their ideas today? Ms. Michelle? Well, what we do is we put emails out, we do flyers, we put things on our communication boards, we have posters all over, uh, we've used some technology with Twitter, Facebook, using the website. Any additional ideas? Yeah, this is Michelle. We do some of the same things at the Marietta site. Um, you know, putting um, pay, uh, you know brochures on the pamphlets and on the tables and the work areas and the um, break areas where people's most likely going to congregate together. That's a great idea. And also in the um, lunch rooms, and um, you can put some little uh, advertisement on the break tables. Perfect. Next slide, Daryl. Sorry, I was on mute. Let's think about the best meeting that your chapter has had in recent months. Why do you remember it? What made it so special? So some of the events that we've had at our chapters I'd like to share with you. We conducted a hoedown, so we rented a ranch, and we made it a family event. We had uh, went out and bought a bunch of pumpkins, and the children had a pumpkin carving contest. We've also held Oktoberfest, where we did uh, uh, got people together, and we brought in a um pa, pa band. We've had masquerade balls. One of my favorite is a murder mystery dinners that we've done, and casino nights. So casino nights is a really great opportunity that you can raise funds and money for uh, charitable contributions. And luau's. Luau's is one of our big things. We would uh, rent a hotel and we'd go out to the pool area and bring in a, a local uh, facility that does the luau's for us. And it's a great opportunity to get people together for networking and making it a really fun, special night so that you go away and you really remember that event. Does anybody have any other event ideas that you'd like to share with us today? Kelly, I have a question, if I may. When you have those yes. events, do you charge the members or how does it get paid for? So at our particular chapter, we have dues and they're $1.50 a week, but for our events, we do charge. So if you're a member, it'll be like $25 to go and you can bring one guest. And if you're not a member, we charge them the full fee. So if it's costing me $50 to put on an event per person, I'm going to charge that non-member $50 and I'm going to charge the member $25. And that's your benefit for being a member. And that's a great way to get new folks to sign up to become members. Perfect. Thank you. All righty. We'll go on to the next slide. So remember, people are really busy. So we need to make it worth their while to break free and come to our event. Do you all have any ideas of how you've been able to talk to people and talk them into coming to your events? Is there any special method that you use to get them excited to come to your event?
Well, in our chapter, we really talk it up and we show pictures and we'll really advertise. We've even used the method where we've uh, sent announcements to everybody's phone to remind them of events. So you can get with your communication group and they can help you advertise it that way. And I know at the Marietta event, I think they're sending text messages to all their members. So that's a great way to get people excited and remind them to come to your event. Hey, Shelly, this is Lynn Schneider. Um, just want to say the personal yes. invitation. I know I talked a lot in the previous uh, segment about relationships, but the personal invitation is significant. And I think there's a fair number of studies that indicate that people want to participate. They just need that personal invitation. And that goes a long way. That's a great, that's a great input. We used to have uh, boosters that would go from desk to desk and pass out the flyers and it really did make a huge impact. Next slide, Daryl. So remember, you don't have to do the same boring things time after time. Let's put some pizzazz into your program. Highlight the topic of the presenter. Ensure that you have a convenient time and place and appeal to people, make it fun. So what we try to do uh, at our chapters is we set up this thing that's called, if you snooze, you lose. So we start with like $50 and we draw a member's name at the end of the event. And if the member's there, they get that $50. And if they're not there, the next program we have, it'll go up to $100. And we usually cap it around 300. But the great thing about that, you know, we'll draw about three names. Then we'll take those names and we'll put them in an e-blast. We'll put them in our newsletter. And it gets people to go back and to talk to their cube mates and say, hey, you know, if you were at that dinner last night, you would have won $300. So it's really a great way to get people to want to go to the meeting. And then you're also calling out the names and everybody's looking around. Are they really here? Uh, so it's a, it's a great way to get people excited about coming to the meetings. Next slide. The components of an effective meeting may be broken down into a number of different ways. On this slide, we've determined three simple steps to follow to ensure that you have an effective meeting. Planning ahead, setting the content, and staging the meeting. Now we're gonna look into each of them in a little bit more detail. Next slide. Planning. There are four steps to look at in terms of planning. You wanna organize your program committee, you want to choose your theme, plan the program, and determine your budget. Remember, advanced planning is very vital for the success of an event. We try to plan our meetings out three to six months because you really need to have that set in stone so that nothing falls. Don't do this alone. Remember, you have a team, you have a committee, or whatever it takes. The organization of your team plays a key role in your planning process. We'll talk about the importance of themes and objectives for the meeting. However, you must first know how much budget you have so that you can adequately plan. This is an example of the basic program structure for most chapters. Generally, the program chairman or the coordinator has the primary responsibility for the meeting and may assign as many teams or team leaders as he or she needs to get the job done. So what we've done in recent years is uh, assign people as program managers, and that gives them the ability to step up and take charge and to lead in an environment that they normally wouldn't have an opportunity. So it's worked out really well giving people stretch assignments. Next slide. Many chapters have found it helpful to have meetings centered around a general theme. Some examples of meeting themes may include sports, barbecues, leadership, motivational speakers. Does anyone have any additional themes that you'd like to share that you've had in the past that's been really successful? I think everybody's asleep today. Next slide. Advanced program planning is critical to success. One must allow enough time to secure facilities and speakers. 
to pull off good programs, you have to be strategic and thinking ahead all the time. At our chapter, we actually conduct an LMLA offsite in early January where we get together and we map out our plan for the entire year. We establish our budget. We also get together with our company leaders to brainstorm potential events that promote the company's objectives as well as the interest to our members. Next slide. As I said before, advanced program planning is critical to success. Knowing your chapter's budget is essential to your planning. How can you project what kind of budget you should have for your program? How have you learned to do more with less? Does anyone want to share any of their ideas that they may have that they've done at their chapters? Well, at our chapter, we have used our internal pilots. We've used our program leadership, you know, from the ADP program, our U2 night, our JSF night. Astronauts are a great way to bring them in because they're free. You can also use your local mayor or your city officials. They're free speakers and they're very interesting and people are excited to see what's going on in their community. Next slide. These are five bullets that we'll expand upon on the following slides. The opening ceremonies help to set the tone for your meeting. In addition, the spotlight and main features will be the heart of your meeting and should therefore receive utmost attention to detail. Any other additional activities during or after your meeting can prove to be a beneficial way to get people to network, unwind, and end the meeting on a positive note. And it's very important to close well. Now let's look at these individually. This slide contains examples of various items that may be included in your opening ceremonies. Things to think about. Who will call the meeting to order? Who will perform the invocation, the pledge, and who's gonna be introducing the guests? The spotlight should be short and not particularly related to main features. This slide depicts a few suggestions for spotlight speaker, speakers. One important note, a spotlight speaker should always be given a time limit. Far too many times, a spotlight speaker will go way too long and just kind of take over your program. So give them about 10 minutes, and especially if it's before a meal, people will get kind of antsy. Next slide. <clears throat> the meeting content should consist of the main feature, you may have a speaker, a panel discussion, or it could be your speech contest, or you may just be hosting a social event for the membership. So there's another idea I wanted to share with you. At our chapter, we have a secret handshaker. We do this to increase our networking. So when the start of the meeting, I'll grab a person and say, hey, would you be our secret handshaker tonight? And I'll say, so the 10th person that you shake the hands with, give me their name and I'll announce them at the end of the event. And we give them a special award a ticket to go to our next event. That's also gonna increase your attendance at your next event. We also have table sponsors at our dinner meetings. We'll assign one of the leaders to a table. So it allows members to sit at their table and interact with the company leader or an executive. So at Lockheed Martin, we were so compartmentalized that employees really don't get that type of networking opportunity during their normal day. So this is another great benefit and reason to join our chapter. Next slide. Getting the right speakers for your meeting can be quite a challenge. Many different items must be considered. Does the meeting have a theme? Have the meeting, have we had too many serious meetings? Maybe we want to do something fun. You know, really make sure that you have family night. That's an important thing our members have said. Do we need a speaker or can we do something different? Could we just do a panel discussion, maybe have movie night? So how much money is in the budget for a speaker? There's great ideas that you can get at our anime annual conference. And remember, our next one's gonna be in October in Greenville, South Carolina. That's where we're gonna share ideas. We'll capture those ideas and put them out on the website, but it's a great opportunity to reach out to others and learn from them. Staging the meeting. What's involved in staging a meeting? Next slide. 
These are examples of the various details that are involved in staging a meeting. Selecting the perfect location is really important. And the food service. Will you have a buffet? Will you do plated meals? Or sometimes we just do appetizers. Financial arrange arrangements. Will you pay at the end of the event? Will you pay 30 days out? Will they bill you? And the physical setup. So you have to decide, are we going to have round tables, square tables, tables of eight, tables of 10? And some of our events, we'll do high top tables and we'll just do it as social and make it more interactive where the executives are walking around talking to the employees or have displays. And of course, your audio visual is really important. Be sure that you get there early and you test it out and always have a backup plan for potential issues. Next slide. <clears throat> Staging the meeting. Be sure to get there early, have some setup time, set up the meet and greet like we do with our secret handshaker, check your air conditioner, your AV, your light controls, arrange to have the servers depart before the meeting starts. Nothing is more disruptive than the clanking and, and clacking of plates and silverware as the speaker is trying to talk. So does anybody on the phone today have additional items that you would like to share about staging the meeting that you would like to talk about today? Um, this is Michelle. It's not. Well, hey, oh, hello? Is that, oh. Yes. One thing I'd like to, um, to say also that um, also with our chapter is that um, whenever you are, are planning a, um, a program or a meeting, you know, consider how, you know, many um, of your members that might be going and you might need to plan it ahead of time. Uh, making sure that you can get the venue, get a large enough venue, and you're absolutely right about getting there. We get to the venue hours early to make sure everything is set up and go through, you know, sound checks and everything, and making sure because if there's something that's going to go wrong, it'll go wrong. But as long as you got it prepared, you got a script, bring several scripts of what, you know, what, you know, anybody that's introducing or what's going on. One of our largest events is the um, Veterans Dinner. Well, we have typically, you know, 300 or more, you know, members coming to the event. So, you know, you, you got to have that script down. You have to have, you know, everybody, you know, have, and then one person leading it. Not everybody is going to be, um, you know, the person in charge. So everybody can understand what their role is if they, they're unsure of it. But when you get several people leading it, you get one person that's going this way, one going the other. So have a central person, a central point of contact contact for your meetings in your program. And I would suggest that just like what you said, Shelly, get there and go through it and have scripts so everybody know what it is that they are um, that they are performing. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Okay. Amen to the scripts. Absolutely. Art, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, well, this is A, that's what I was gonna say. With abs the scripts are absolutely essential. One of the worst things that can happen to you is have is someone who decides to go off script. Scripts are absolutely essential. And the bigger the yes, and I usually bring I usually bring two. I have one up on the podium and one down with me so I can practice. It's really absolutely. important. Absolutely. Next slide, Daryl. For the most um, part, people choose. Shelly, yes. just one minute. Oh, I'm sorry. Nat wanted me to say something. Go ahead by providing water for the speaker. <laughs> That's one thing Nat wanted to. But go ahead, I apologize. <laughs> All righty. So for the most part, people choose to come to your event because they expect to have a nice time. And the definitions of that are all over the place. Yet, the fact remains that most people want to feel good that they made the decision to be at your event. Therefore, it's really important to create an atmosphere of community. Next slide. There's an old saying about program management, open and close strongly. Close your meetings professionally. Use the opportunity to highlight an upcoming event. Four points with the appropriate thank yous. Don't forget that. And at our chapter, we give away door prizes at the end of the event. We also do a 50-50 drawing, and we do our secret handshaker award. 
Next slide. Top Management Night is a very well-received meeting. We actually hold President's Night and Aeronautics Night at our chapter. We get a higher attendance when we have an executive speak. This type of event can also give the employees an opportunity to network with executives, which is a huge plus why you would want to join our chapter. Next slide. What are strategies of getting senior management involved at your event? At our chapter, we also meet periodically with our chapter advisors and our company executives to see what we can take off their plate. We're the conduit for communication between the company and the employee. So be sure that your chapter is value added for your company. It's really important. Get that face time, get in front of them and see what you can do. Also, always remember to personally invite your company leaders to all your events. Next slide. <coughs> green conventions and green meetings are a huge international movement dedicated to protecting the environment by use of the wise choices during event planning, the event itself, and afterwards. Be prepared to deal with company individuals or groups that may ask you how green is your function. So just an idea, at our chapter, we ask the event facility to box up the leftover food and we donate it to the local food shelters. Next slide. A chapter can receive the Chapter Programs Award by conducting programs that enhance the member's professional and personal growth. This award is within reach of all chapters. In addition, we'll also present one Chapter Outstanding Program Award to the chapter with the most accumulated points in this area. There's a full program's award criteria explanation and a recognition and awards guide that you can download from the NMA website. Next slide. Oops, when things go bad, and they will. So I just wanted to share with you at one of our dinner meetings, we had a facility that actually ran out of food. So I had to quietly go around and select 10 friends, and we went to the restaurant next door and we ate, and then we snuck back into our seat so no one was the wiser. So always have that little backup plan. So does anybody, and this is short on time, does anybody have an oops that they would like to share with the audience today? I know this is Davis again. We, we, a couple of times we have run out of food and yes, it has been embarrassing. And what we, in one case, what we did was uh, we, we knew which people didn't, didn't get any dinner and we sent them um, free free dinner tickets for the next meeting, but that that oh, is great. Right, so you should always make sure your facility is planning for five percent over, and always have them set an extra table. Also, I just hate it when somebody walks in and there's a couple and they don't have a place where they can sit together. So I always want to make sure there's extra seating. Next slide. Evaluations, how can you measure the effectiveness and the success of your meeting? Next slide. So a great way we found that we can measure the success of our event is to have an evaluation form at the dinner event. And you can have them fill it out right there at the event and give them tickets to your drawing, you know, to your 50-50 or to your raffle prizes. So there are several examples for you to use. They're in the NMA Programs Guidebook. So you can get one of those, revise it, and tailor it to your particular meeting. Next slide. Just a reminder that you may download copies of the guidebook from the NMA website at nma1.org. And now I'd like to give you the opportunity, are there any additional questions that you would like to ask? Shelly, I have one comment. Given your comment about the word meeting, in your first slide and your use of events through your up to presentation should we consider calling our general membership meeting something other than general membership meeting yes we try to so if we're having a luau i won't say this is a general membership meeting i'll advertise luau if it's a casino night casino night so we try to stay away from general membership meeting when we're doing our advertising actually pick a theme and call it that on your flyer and do your advertising around what the theme's gonna be. S35 nights, 
uh, JSF night, uh, astronaut, blah, blah, coming in to talk to us. Um, then you're getting away from, yeah, if you just, I know a lot of chapters are saying this is our general meeting, general membership meeting, and it's the connotation of that just doesn't make people really excited and wanting to go. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. Thank you for those suggestions. Any other questions? I think we're right on time, Steve. Uh, I'd like to thank you for attending, and please stay tuned. You have another training session coming up. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shelley. As anticipated, you did a wonderful job. I appreciate it. Um, you always bring great energy and enthusiasm to any presentation, and I'm sure our members enjoyed spending some time with you. So <clears throat> our next presenter is Deborah davis Light. Deborah works at Lockheed Martin Aeronautics in Fort Worth, Texas. Deborah is fairly new to our NMA Board of Directors. She's co-chair of the Professional Development Committee, and um, this is her first time to do a workshop for us at the chapter leadership level. So, Deborah, um, we want to welcome you, and I'll turn the microphone over to you. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes, ma'am, we can hear you just fine. Okay, oh, well, I want to say uh, welcome. Thanks everybody for joining. Uh, like Steve said, I'm actually the uh, PD uh, co-chair for this year. I'm actually the national director for chapter 249. Uh, I've actually been a member for LMLA for about seven years now. Uh, I've actually uh, held positions within my chapter from uh, actually uh, deputy manager to uh, deputy to vice president of professional development. I've also held positions on our next uh, North Texas Council for vice president and president as well. I'm actually, um, I've been member of the year for 2016, uh, the chapter and member of the year for the national letter uh, for 2016. I'm a veteran, I'm Army, and uh, I've worked at Lockheed Martin for about 35 years. So uh, I'm really excited about everybody being on here today and I'm hoping the information that I bring forward to you that would definitely help you guys to kind of on your journey to uh, growing your chapters. Next slide, Tara. Okay, so uh, like we said that uh, our NMA chapter wants to be here more than ever to help you guys to plan ahead and to bring you, you know, more opportunities and things for uh, your chapter in a professional way. Uh, we want this to actually be an experience for everyone, you know, like a win-win to making sure that you meet your goals. Next slide. All right, so what's in it for me? So for participants, I know a lot of the uh, members and stuff, they're always looking to say, hey, if I join this chapter and things of that nature, what can I get out of it for me? We want the members to be able to kind of gain new skills, you know, invest in their own careers. How can I further my career by being in this volunteer organization? What kind of uh, things going to help me for my day-to-day, -day, you know, tasks that I do? Uh, building new relationships and things of that nature, you know. How is this going to help me, you know, to like say go forward with the new members and the things that we're offering? From an organization standpoint, we want to kind of be able to offer you continuous learning. Uh, cost effective for how you get your leadership training exactly you know you know bring you cheaper things to say hey if I can take this you know I can move forward to it, it won't cost me an arm and a leg but yet and still it's going to help me to kind of a better uh, set myself up for being a leader and also engaging with employees you know of your own you know what I'm saying how can I kind of like engage and take the things that I learned from NMA, go back to my other members, you know, be enthusiastic about telling them, hey, because of this skill that I've learned, you know, is one of the reasons why I'm in this leadership position today. So all of these type of things we want to be able to try to bring forth for you guys to kind of help you, you know, to grow your own uh, career path. Okay, next slide. Now, some of your key stakeholders, always your senior leadership. You want to always try to make absolutely sure that what you learned within your chapters, that you want to make sure that they see you as a value to the organization itself. A lot of, you know, things that you normally won't get a chance to practice when you end your day-to-day -day tasks, like leading a meeting or, you know, learning how to schedule a meeting, learning how to facilitate a meeting. All of these things, once you can show your leadership that, you know, you can bring value to that team, then so they'll start giving you more responsibility things. 
your human resources, okay? Like Steve had alluded to, and I think Lynn may have had also said, make sure that your human resources, you consider them as your partnership. There's a lot of things that you see in leading, uh, that your human resource, they can kind of, you know, help you advise things and things across the board. And also not only that, we can help take a lot of things off of their plate uh, as well. Because on of our board of directors at LMLA, you know, at uh, Lockheed, we do have a human resource, a member of our board of directors. So you may want to consider having a representative from your human resource as a member, you know, somewhere on your board. And also your members, you want to make sure that your members, they are your most valuable asset of anything. Your members are the ones <clears throat> that's going to help determine whether your chapter grow or whether your chapter, you know, get at a staggering point and not moving forward. Always, you know, making sure that the kind of a training that they need or the kind of a training that you want to bring forward to them, the type of benefits you want them to have. Survey your members from time to time because you always got turnover in your membership. Survey your members. We do that at least at least by month. Uh, Maybe, maybe twice a year with our memberships in uh, LMLA, we always send out surveys to try to figure out what type of workshops they want, what type of courses they want, you know, because you always got such a big turnover. Survey your members from time to time to see what it is exactly that they're looking for and what, you know, they feel like will be a benefit to them to get out of the chapter. Next slide. <laughs> All right, like I kind of alluded to, you know, a minute ago about your human resource. It's not a bad idea, like I said, to make, make, a, make you know, a member from your human resource to kind of a, put them on the board of directors, you know, or if not that, invite them to your meetings. Have some kind of communication with your human resources because they are very valuable. A lot of times, like I said, that, you know, for the training we do, you do have different types of compliance training across the organizations. We do all the time at Lockheed. Uh, you know, our chapter kind of will bring forth that training that has to do with Outlook, you know, Microsoft Office, Microsoft Word, all those types of things that we can bring forth, you know, to our members that help the, help the, the organization that they don't have to offer those types of training. But yet and still, those type of training also helps each of your members, not, you know, from day-to-day -day tasks and uh, help them to uh, gain, you know, the knowledge and stuff that they need to make them to be successful. Next slide. All right, I want to pause here for a second, guys, and let you kind of a look over this here, because I want you to kind of a think, and if anybody, you know, got any ideas, I want you to share those for about a minute or so with, you know, everyone that's online. You've been put in this position to be the vice president, or actually, you're going to lead this professional development team. And you're thinking to yourself, okay, I know I wanted to be success, but I know I want everything's, and never, everything's never going to go perfect. I can tell you that right now. But you want this to be successful. So how do you think of some of the ways that you want to get this up and going? And you want to say, hey, you know, how can I engage with the team? How am I, how am I going to start out with this to make sure this is going to be a success in the end? If you might want to share an idea for a minute or two, um, I'd like you to do that. I think you have to have a plan for personal development or professional development for for the year and for the the whole members, and we need to start with a plan. I think. Okay. Okay. Marcelo, uh, I appreciate your comment. You you're right on the spot. You you very you know that's that's the most uh, critical things, guys. When I first became vice president of professional uh, development was to think about how I want to physically lead this team to be successful and uh, reach, you know, the goals and objectives that I got to, um, you know, for that year to plan. Uh, I first started off with a kickoff meeting. I wanted to, you know, first align my teams. I wanted to let them know what our objectives was. I wanted to, you know, provide that vision. I wanted to actually, like, say, you know, do that expectation as what is expected of the team. I assigned roles and responsibilities. I kind of looked at my budget, you know, what am I going to need to, you know, which classes I'm going to need, uh, exactly, you know, what class is going to be taught, what type of facilities, you know, I'm going to need to teach these classes. All of these type of things, guys, is upfront things that you have to make sure that you want to align these at the beginning of the year. Because I'll tell you from experience, if you don't have some type of alignment, some type of schedule, some type of plan in place, 
you're all over the place. You, 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 you have to have something to say, okay, I want to do this next, that next, this, that. Something that kind of makes sure that you and your team is aligned and, is, you know, and exactly what is expected and stuff. And uh, I kind of had, you know, team meetings on a quarterly basis also that I met with all my teams and I made absolutely sure that my teams knew that I had an open door policy. Uh, you know, I had one-on-one -on -one meetings and whenever they had problems, they could always come to me and talk to me as well. You know, and, and also, you know, uh, like recognizing, you know, your, your team members on how well they do and things of that nature. All of those type of things you want to make sure that you have in place. Okay. Next slide. All right, so here go some of the courses that we do have in NMA and uh, a lot of more of them out there on the website that you guys can make absolutely sure that uh, you do and go get final details of everything and stuff because, you know, there are a lot of things out there that would help you as an individual to grow, you know, yourself as well. We got the foundation management, the building virtual teams, which is most definitely important, you know, as of now. Uh, we got the, uh, the uh, leader labs and the uh, online courses, the webinars and things. So I'll go through each one of these a little bit more as we continue to go through the slides. So next slide, Dara. All right, we got the foundations of management, which uh, right now, uh, we may be particularly kind of a phase of this out, but as of right now, we are still continuing on with this course. These are the three courses that are being offered. Like I said, you can get more details out on the nma1.org website as well. Next slide. All right, building your virtual teams. And I know, you know, each one of us has spoken about this now, guys, given the uh, virus that, you know, time phase we in. And no one ever actually really knows exactly what's coming up, what's around the corner. We have to just kind of a go with things that, you know, what pretty much uh, say uh, uh, kind of a, you know, at that time, we have to just kind of a deal with the situation that we're given. So, I mean, building your virtual teams now is more important than ever and stuff. And that kind of a still help gives you that communication between the two of you to feel like you're not so, you know, alone and you feel kind of a lot connected and stuff like Steve was saying. A lot of times when you have those meetings, if they even on a daily basis or a bi-weekly, whatever the case may be, it kind of a gives you guys that communication feels to say, hey, we know we all this together and stuff you know and we're going to get through this and let's do our next plan and then kind of keep everything on schedule for the most part next slide now uh we have our monthly live online webinars as well guys and uh i know that uh steve from time to time has actually reached out uh asked the teams you know and all the chapters what kind of uh webinars they'd like to see and at any point, guys, don't hesitate to send in what type of webinars you think you may like to see or like to bring up and stuff. Because I know uh, Steve, you know, most definitely, and uh, I know that Brian is coming on. He would actually be willing to work with you guys to try to bring forth whatever type of webinars you want to see. And I do want to stress, you know, I know a lot of people's schedules are busy a lot of times. But if you ever want to go back and look at your webinars and things at another given point, you can always go on our website and all your webinars are archived. So, you know, these are great opportunities to, you know, to, uh, to kind of, uh, you know, ask questions, get things you may have an idea about, what you was wondering about, and things of that nature. So I do encourage, you know, to make sure that your members, you know, things of that nature can join in on the uh, monthly webinars. Next slide. These are some of our NMA leader labs. Uh, a lot of them there, you can kind of see on the screen itself. I mean, hiring opportunities and uh, meeting all your needs, operation overload. I mean, from time to day, you know, time within your work schedule, a lot of things do get stressful from time to time. So, you know, maybe if you can, you know, just take a step back, you know, kind of a go and look at what's out there on the website. Maybe you'll find some things that are kind of a help you learn how to deal with, you know, some of the challenges that you may be facing and things that nature and even you know kind of a say you know with your managers when you sit down at your team meetings hey you know i saw this thing on on you know lma website and uh you know the nma square website and things and you know maybe i can kind of share this with the team and things and the things of what i saw and that's a good way guys to kind of a, like bring in your team bring in your managers let your managers kind of know what it is that you're doing and you know, with this organization and uh, that way you can kind of get them involved in, you know, in this from an um, engagement uh, perspective. Next slide. All right. Uh, the, uh, we have now those new uh, six uh, online webinars uh, from the library courses that we've uh, brought up. Uh, like I said, they're self-paced. They're one-hour courses. 
Uh, the price there, they're only like $39. You can also have these uh, done from a facility perspective as well. I mean, you know, like I said, we may not be able to see each other, you know, in person now, but this would be a great idea to kind of like have a, you know, one of these courses, you know, online and have everybody joined in and have, you know, a question and answer type uh, situation. So that would be a, another good way that you can kind of uh, share things with your teams right now since everything is pretty much virtual. Next slide. And our new, another new one we have going now is our facility skills. Our facility skills, like I said, you can, you can either have the leadership guide, you got the participant membership uh, uh, manual that you can actually get. Those courses there, like I said, the cost is like $59, but also uh, I think it was mentioned before, you can use your chapter rewards points. And that's a good thing to remember, guys, that uh, your chapter reward points, they don't roll over from year to year at the end of that current year you will lose them if you don't use them so take all the advantages that you possibly can of your chapter reward points your chapter have earned those points and they're there for your members to use so make sure you do take advantage of that next slide all right we have our certified manager courses uh based on where you at in your supervisor you know type uh uh, mem uh uh, kind of a like leadership uh, position, you may want to take a look and see if you want to do your certified manager or you may want to do your certified supervisor certification. Uh, either way, you know, according to where you are within your, you know, uh, career status that take a look at these. They have more details out there on the website and you can read more about them and, uh, you know, uh, kind of a get, um, check within your chapter because I knew some of these courses do reimburse um, you taking some of these classes. I don't know the percentages, so, but I knew some of your, class, your chapters, they do reimburse once you get those certifications for taking these here. Next slide. All right. And like Marcello said, Guys, I, I can't stress how critical it is, you know, being uh, the actual vice president or the deputy or whatever it is of this professional development. Take advantage of your professional development guidebook. This will lead you through uh, a lot of how you want to go through, do your planning, how you want to assess things, how you want to meet, when to set up your meetings, you know, all the things, ingredients, like Steve said, it's going to take for you to be successful within this professional development. It's a lot, it's a lot of things that has to be planned out within professional development. But I think if you put yourself on a guide, on a year, you know, guide, or you will kind of get through this. Now, some of the things that also the forms that you would need. Uh, your B3 forms, these is if you got classes that you thought of or things you want to bring forth that you want to actually uh, get like CEU credits, which is your continuing education units. This is the form you use to submit to NMA to get approval for those classes in order to get CEU credits. The B4 form is the form that actually you get approved for those when you submit it to NMA and you bring it back and they give you that for approval. And your B5 form, guys, it's like saying you have facilitators that actually, you know, hold classes and things of that nature. Once they particularly given those uh, uh, names back to NMA, all of those would actually uh, come back to the members, you know, for getting CVU credits. But the B3 form is the most critical one because that's the one you got to actually send for to even get approved for that class to be able to receive CEU credit. So make sure that you get, a, you know, get understanding, get your forms in, get your classes in and things of that nature. Because uh, one of the things that I did kind of a set up with LMLA was our book club. I actually got that up and going and running. And the book club was not one of the classes that actually you got B, uh, CEU credits for and things of that nature. But I wrote up that form. I sent it in to NMA. I got it approved and everything and stuff. So now that, you know, once we actually uh, have our book club and stuff, we can kind of get CEU credits uh, kind of for those classes there. So, and like I said, on the website, you got all of, you know, ordering courses, requesting certificates, everything that you need, you know, to kind of get you through that year is on that NMA website. And I can't stress enough how to go and use that guide to help you guys to get through it. Next slide. All right, like I mentioned, remember, you know, your chapter rewards points, you know, you can use them for different things, you know, becoming your classes, and you definitely can also use them when you do your conference registration. So make sure that, you know, you take advantage of all the reward points within that year to make sure you don't lose them. Okay, next slide. 
All right, so recognizing your peoples and achieving this stuff, guys. And this is the more this, I mean, like I said, your your members and your, you know, these are your most valuable resources to you. I don't care how you found a way to actually kind of recognize or, uh, you know, give achievement to your members. Please do that, please. I mean, if it's no more than just a thank you on the back, that goes such a very, very long ways with your members. Because, you know, you got to remember, we're not getting paid to do this. We're doing this because we're enthusiastic. We're doing this because we want to see other members, you know, other, you know, wants advance and things of that nature. We want to build them up. We want to help guide them through their career so that we can you know see them move from place to place and a lot of times I've had a lot of my uh, kind of like team members come back up to me and say to me how much they appreciated me how much they thanked me for taking the time you know to kind of just give them those little you know different props and those little different encouragements to say that you can do this you can do that and stuff so recognize your members recognize the achievements I don't care if you have to send a note to the supervisors you know sending out an e-blast in your letters you know send them an email anything that it does to kind of let those members know how much you appreciate them definitely do that recognize them okay next slide all right and like i said this is another way that you can actually uh, celebrate your executive leadership and things you know once you know like i said when you have those annual conferences and things like that uh, you know, make sure you nominate your executive sponsors and stuff because a lot of times they play a huge role in how they get that, you know, that word out, you know, as your leadership and things of that nature to say, you know, how they get involved and how they want to actually, you know, help the chapter to be successful. Okay, next slide. Okay. Now, I know I've given you guys, you know, a lot of things up front, a lot of said things and, uh, um, you know, of how you want to go through and do things. So at this time, I want to kind of a take a pause and uh, let you guys see if there's any kind of a, you know, questions you have from me or how you want to go by doing things from a PPD perspective. So uh, do I have any questions you guys want to ask me for right now? Hi, this is Pranita Jackalinky from LMLA 546. Um, I'm calling, I'm asking a question regarding um, how to get people to take on these classes because a lot of times uh, we go through the time and effort to put these classes out there and uh, enable the team to take advantage of it, but we have very little par participation. Well, a, a lot of times, you know, like they said, everybody is busy. Everybody, you know, is, you know, got their schedule, you know, uh, kind of a very overwhelmed and stuff. And some of the things that we thought was like, okay, for instance, like when we had our book club and we had like a place where everybody can go and register, you know, for the book club itself. And one of the things we did was that from the registration that we had, we started putting reminder notices on everybody's uh, calendar. So a lot of times that kind of a helps you if you can kind of a give your members, you know, another way just to remember those type of things. Because I don't think it's the fact that people don't really want to participate. I think it may be the fact that a lot of people that, you know, they either forget or, you know, it's just, you know, it's just a lot of things that's going on. It's just a lot of things that's going on. So that may be a good way that, you know, once you have events and you sign up, try to put, you know, reminders on the calendars and things to kind of, a, you know, remind them, hey, you got this event coming up and stuff and, and things of that nature. Um, Deborah, that's a good way to do it. Uh, the way, uh, this is Raja Mir from uh, Nokia Leadership Association. The way um, I try, try to do this is that I only, I try to look for people who are really interested in taking the class. So mm -hmm. what, so I, I would start very early, uh, you know, with planning stage early on, and I wouldn't actually start the class until, you know, we are three or four months into uh, the year. So I would send out a lot of, lot of surveys and then, uh, you know, to see people who, who responds to it, you know, what people are actually interested in. And those are a lot of surveys, you know, every month I send out a survey initially, you know, what people are interested in. And then uh, based on those interests, I would filter out and give them certain courses. So this is what they are really interested in. Then I would try to see at least I get four or five people for a particular uh, certification program that they want to do. And now the certification program can be like a CM or uh, what we offer in NMA, but it mm -hmm. all, it would also be something that is aligned with the strategic vision of your company. 
So if you're a technology company, you can off offer a technical pro certification program as well. Um, uh, at least I, that's what I do. And and uh, and and basically, you know, um, then filter out. You know, then let let people know that they're going to be spending five to ten hours or whatever, however long it takes per week yeah. or you know, per per two weeks. Uh, on the certification and it's uh, and and get their commitment beforehand and only the people who are com really committed uh, are come on board to this program so they, these are really committed people and they make sure that the program succeeds yeah yeah i, I totally agree with you Raj. that's a very good idea that's a very very good way of uh, doing that because you know especially with the certifications as well once someone is very committed to doing it uh you're right they're they're going to be there they're going to participate they're going to do the things you know that they have to do because they got their time they got their money invested they got a lot of things you know that you know like they said it's an investment so you're right so if you can get you know especially when it comes to certification if you can get those committed ones to say it's going to be there then that will be you know an excellent idea to do that survey across the company to make sure that you get those that you know are willing to invest that time you know uh, within that Deborah, so i, I believe i think daryl uh, uh time wise uh do we have time for another question or you know i believe that may be the ending of it i think you could take one more Okay. okay. I, I, I have one more quickie, Deborah. This is Avis. Okay. In your, in your book club, what kind of books are you planning on reading? Well, a lot about book clubs that we had, and I thought would worked out the best. When we actually went into our executive leadership, was at first we was going to try to come up with a list. And then we said, you know, by executive leadership being so busy, their schedule, they, you know, this is already kind of taking out their time. We allowed them to pick the books. We allowed them to pick the books that they're familiar with, the ones that they've already read, the ones they feel comfortable with doing. And I and we and that, you know, from experience, we found out that was the best route to go because the leadership, like Steve has said, your executive leadership is not gonna turn you down. They're not, you know. All you got to do is ask them. They're not going to turn you down. A lot of times, if you go to them, they would go out of their way to try to, you know, make that obligation to be there with you. And it worked out, and it worked out marvelous. I mean, because a lot of the members or chapter members, you know, they typically, you're not going to actually get to know a lot of your executive leadership in day by day, because a lot of times they're not going to have time to stop and say, hey, you, you know, you know, by, you know, kind of saying, how you doing today, da, da, this and this and that. But when we had those, those book clubs and executive leadership was there. I mean, they were so excited to get to know a lot of the members that they had never even seen, you know, even from day to day, just work wise. So, you know, yeah. let them pick their own, be flexible with them, you know, kind of a, a work around their schedule. A lot of times if they can't be there, they'll send their deputy, they'll send somebody there. So, I mean, you know, it, it's a it's a win-win situation. It's definitely a win-win situation. But I, I would suggest allowing them to pick the books they're more familiar with, though. Yeah, good thinking. Okay, I, I believe, like Dara said, I believe that's all the questions we have uh, for right now for this session here. But I want to leave you guys with one one quick, you know, um, comment. Is that you have to remember as being, you know, vice president of this committee, you are a mentor. Your your members, your your team, your teams are looking for you for guidance. And your enthusiastic, your energy, everything that you bring to the table is going to inspire your team. So you have to make sure that you know when you're going through these, it may be difficult times, it may be things that you're not aware with, and, and you know, this may be your first time doing this, but always be, you know, in that positive no matter what. I mean, take things from the positive way. Yeah, things are not going to go, you know, exactly the way they want to be, but, you know, always take things from a positive attitude, go into it, you know, enthusiastic and, and energetic and things, and, and that's going to help your team because, like I said, they're going to be watching you, and they're going to be coming to you, you know, as their leader to kind of a guide them as to which way, you know, they need to go and the things they need to do. And most of all, guys, I do want to say good luck. And no matter what, how hard it may be, it's very rewarding in the end. And I have no doubt in my mind that you guys can absolutely do this. Okay, back to you, Deborah. All right, Deborah, you are hired. 
you did a wonderful job with that. Your energy and enthusiasm are absolutely contagious. Um, when we asked for someone to do it, you stepped right up. And I'm like, okay, let's give her a shot at this. And you did wonderfully. So thank you so much. And have a good Hi, afternoon here in Fort Worth. Our next presenter is going to talk to you about community services and the NMA Leadership Speech Contest. I first met, met, first met Matt, we'll get it out eventually, when he was chapter treasurer of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. And one of the great things about serving as an NMA chapter leader is that people get to see you in a different light. And I knew at the time that Matt was in the finance and accounting department of Blue Cross, and that is a huge organization in Detroit, Michigan. I don't know how many people work there, but I'm guessing it's several scores. And Matt just stood out. Uh, he did a wonderful job as chapter treasurer. I guess everybody in Detroit saw the same thing in him. And before long, he worked his way through the chairs, was chapter president. And like a lot of you, um, I hope that um, your tenure as chapter president is followed by an opportunity to help out on the national level because Matt's presidency and the good job that he did um, made people aware of Blue Cross that he would be a good person to represent Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan on the NMA Board of Directors. So Matt came on the board and um, this year, it's his second year, uh, it's his first year, I'm sorry, and Matt is our 2020 NMA National Secretary. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce our presenter for Community Services and Speech Contest, Matt Zellman. Great, thanks, Steve. Should be able to see my slides now. And we can hear you. Great. And uh, and uh, also wanted to mention that I was, uh, I'm on the community and communications uh, team at the national level, and I had the pleasure of chairing that committee last year. So um, that uh, a lot of these activities I'm gonna be talking about fall under those topics. So let's jump right in. Uh, activities that fall under community services are varied and play an important role in chapter operations. Community activities get people involved that might not, not, not participate in other chapter events. Today, we're going to talk about community activities, Management Week in America, we'll touch on the NMA Leadership Speech Contest, and then we'll open the mics for some discussion and any questions. But please feel free to drop something in the chat along the way if you have a thought, or save it till the end. All right, so what is community service? Making a difference in the community by making a contribution, whether that be money, time, skills, or et cetera. And I would emphasize that uh, donations of time are probably the most valuable uh, in, in today's world. Helping without expecting anything in return really makes one feel good. This motivates people to make a difference. In doing so, you are taking steps that will fulfill the inner urge to stand for something bigger than yourself. In other words, give selflessly. <clears throat> Part of a chapter's mission should be to encourage volunteerism via you know, community services activities. Don't wait on someone to volunteer, but rather reach out to them and you will be surprised by their response. If you are interested in finding organizations needing community volunteers, go to www.serve.gov for one resource. <clears throat> but community service is not all altruistic. Our companies and our sponsoring organizations benefit as well. When we're out in the community, People don't so much see the chapter logo, but they surely understand the government agency or company t-shirts that they'll see. You are the extension of your parent organization, so make sure you let them know what good activities you're doing. The essence of teamwork is trust. Trust can only happen when, you know, when people know one another. Working in the community, services activities can facilitate people getting to really know and understand one another. It creates a sense of community at work and among chapter members. Some people belong to the chapter just so they can communicate, or pardon me, just so they can participate in community services. Here's a question you can answer in the chat. Are there any examples of situations where your chapter has had unexpected or great return by doing community service work? So if you have any of those, go ahead and pop them in the chat or we can, uh, we can talk about them at the end. I know in today's uh, current environment, it's a little difficult to do any kind of community activities where you're attending something in person, but uh, also to keep in mind that there may be some other virtual options to, to consider, uh, and we'll go over some of those here in a little bit. And uh, the, 
<clears throat> picture on this slide was actually from our Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan adopt, or, um, uh, Habitat for Humanity project, and that's me there on the right. So I didn't even realize that when we went through these before. <laughs> All right, so uh, here's some additional community activities that your chapter can participate in. There's cleaning up a park, uh, collecting items for charity, uh, cleaning roadsides like the Adopt a Highway, uh, serving the elderly in nursing homes, assisting at local fire or police stations, helping out at a local library, uh, tutoring children with learning disabilities, and cleaning nursing home uh, gardens. Uh, other ideas we've had sent in to us were homeless shelters, soup kitchens, Ronald McDonald House, Children's Homes, or Children's Hospitals. And then some of those other organizations uh, that are listed on the screen, you can support Junior Achievement, uh, Walk Bike Charities, Holiday Celebrations, Habitat for Humanity, I mentioned, uh, Special Olympics, Blood Drives, Food Banks, etc. So uh, one of the important things to note on this is that um, a lot of these organizations, people tend to just volunteer during the holidays. So it's one thing to maybe note is to, to maybe reach out to some of these groups uh, off season to see if there's help that's needed year round. And you'll probably be surprised at the, the, the response you'll get. <clears throat> In addition to some of the benefits we discussed earlier, your chapter can receive CAR1 chapter achievement reporting points for supporting or participating in, uh, in community activities. You get one or more chapter members participating, one or more points for every chapter member that participates in these activities. Um, but if you do sponsor those activities, you can get additional points, uh, 10 each, I believe. Uh, community activities defined by the recognition committee as a nonprofit activity developed, organized, sponsored, and or co-sponsored by the chapter and conducted or presented outside the chapter or com company by the members. So I just wanted to make that in distinction that you're getting uh, chapter reward points for each uh, member that participates in the activities, but you can get additional points uh, if your chapter sponsors the activity itself. All right, on the Community Service Award, this is presented uh, to chapters in each size group which have demonstrated creativity and innovation in promoting community service activities within the chapter, company, organization, or community during their administrative year. Chapters will be recognized at NMA's annual conference and earn the designation of an award-winning community services chapter, highly sought after. Uh, no additional work is needed by the chapter. All points are compiled by the NMA HQ via the chapter achievement reporting uh, CAR1 form, and it's submitted monthly. Uh, minimum points um, at a level can be exceeded, so chapters, uh, please do not stop your community service activities once you reach that minimum level, so uh, please, please continue to work on those activities. Uh, the chapter, uh, Recognition and Awards Guide provides a description of each of the uh, points that you can earn under Section D, Community Services. All right, as uh, your members work together to volunteer in the community, they will develop bonds and a shared sense of purpose. A well-coordinated community service effort can help lagging chapters to reignite their enthusiasm for participating in NMA. Many members value consistency in community activities, like when you have an annual Thanksgiving turkey basket drive or a clothing donation drive, your members look forward to participating in that event every year. These activities build traditions that make participation in your chapter even more meaningful. All right, so let's take a step back and recall community service activities that have worked for your chapter. Uh, those, those stories can be shared in photos with NMA break time that we can uh, used to uh, promote your uh, activities to across the country, um, or you can drop some in the chat or um, we'll share them at the end here. Uh, Matt, this is Deborah. One of the ones that I sure. do wanna say that have worked extremely well is that Toys for Tots, because you know, working with your chapters, you, you got to work across the organization itself. I mean, we have offsite, you know, at the Lockheed and things of that nature, you know, and collecting the bikes and everything and stuff like that. So that's, that to us, the time has been, has been wonderful every year, every year. It's been very good, yeah. Great, thanks Deborah for sharing. And, and I know we were gonna wait till the end, but if anyone else wants to chime in, please go ahead and do so. All right, well, let's keep moving then. Uh, next up is Management Week in America. Uh, this is another type of community service activity. Um, 
The guidebook is obtained from the NMA headquarters or you can download it on the website, nma1.org. Uh, this contains sample letters, how to secure proclamations from community leaders, a criteria for local manager of the year award and press releases. Uh, note the name Management Week in America was designated by a presidential proclamation in 1983. That's not easily changed at a national level. So if you feel the name should include leadership, you're free to do so uh, for your local recognition. And uh, one of the cool perks about going to visit NMA headquarters in Dayton is they have a, a picture of Ronald Reagan issuing that proclamation uh, framed up in the office. So I always get a kick out of that when I get to see it. So. All right, uh, as a professional leadership development association, part of our mission is to promote great leadership. Uh, this event is a perfect time for you to have a unique theme for your chapter meeting and to promote the importance of lifelong learning and personal development. <laughs> you can go several directions with this. You can recognize someone within the organization or a key business partner, honor a customer or highlight a supplier, reach out into the community for examples of great leadership, or bring other businesses to your meeting and let them know what NMA is all about and encourage them to have a chapter. I also wanted to recognize in light of uh, our current situation that uh, there'll be flexibility on what, what date you wanna uh, recognize Management Week in America, even though it's traditionally that first week in June. So here's some other questions you can ask yourself. Uh, work with your chapter leadership to determine what your chapter can do to make the most of Management Week, uh, determine what activity Activities, awards, programs, et cetera, can be planned for the week. So I guess another good spot to stop there and see, did anyone want to uh, make any comments about Management Week or how they've marketed that in the past to their chapters? And feel free to put something in the chat and we can discuss later if there's any questions. All right, that takes us over to the speech contest and that began in 1988 as an outgrowth of chapter initiatives and sponsoring local essay and speech contests. Uh, it began as the American Enterprise Speech Contest, but was later changed to the NMA Leadership Speech Contest in 2009. Uh, the contest is approved by the NASSP, which is the National Association of Secondary School Principals. Uh, it's now the primary purpose of the nationwide contest to provide an understanding of leadership among our nation's high school age students. Chapters are not required to host a speech contest, but it's an effective activity they do receive 50 points on the CAR-1 uh, form for conducting a contest. And as you can see, it's a high school student's grade nine to 12, um, but they don't have to be in an actual school. We've had, I know at the Blue Cross chapter, several homeschooled students that have participated. So it's a little more challenging to find those folks, but uh, it can be done. All right, so next on to the money, that's all that the kids probably want to, uh, to achieve uh, besides getting some experience on leadership. So. Uh, the next two shot slides show the contest competitive level and prizes. Uh, there are three levels of the competition, the chapter, council, and then the final level. Uh, the prizes increase in value uh, as the contestant progresses through those levels. Uh, as noted on this slide, uh, prizes for these two levels are provided by the chapters and the councils. So it's recommended that uh, first place and the chapter level not exceed 300, council level not to exceed 500, but uh, if you don't have a council level, there's still some flexibility there if, uh, if you decide to to change those limits, but uh, just wanna make sure you're not giving more than the, the next level is giving. Um, and we also had, uh, in light of our current situation, our North Texas Council actually did their uh, speech level contest virtually a week or two ago, and I heard it went very well. So didn't know if anybody wanted to share some stories from that experience if, uh, if you were lucky enough to attend. Nope, all right, well, we'll keep moving then. All right, and then that moves, takes us to the final uh, level. The uh, chapter or council provides transportation and NMA pays for the hotel rooms. Uh, in addition, each contestant is furnished with meal tickets, up to three for the event announcing the winners of the contest. And the responsibility of contest costs are covered here in the, uh, in the next slide. All right, so um, the chapter council level contest would include any food costs and monetary prizes for first, second, and third place. Uh, the council level contest, there may be transportation or lodging costs in addition to monetary prizes and food costs. And then for the final level contest, chapters and councils are responsible for transportation to the conference site, including uh, ground transportation and meals for the contestant and chaperone, and pays the airfare or mileage, whichever is lower, 
in identifying a contact person at the site for the contestant. Uh, NMA provides for lodging for the contestant and one parent or chaperone, uh, one guest room up to two nights, three meal tickets to the event where the winners are announced, and of course, the prize money. So as a reminder, if you've ever attended a conference, the silent auction uh, at the annual conference goes towards supporting the speech contest. So a lot of those proceeds go directly to the prize monies and supporting the students to attend. So make sure to bid early and bid often, as Kathy Longo would like mm -hmm. to say. <laughs> uh, as far as scheduling, uh, the chapter level contest should be conducted far enough in advance uh, so transportation and hotel can be made for the council level contest. Usually this is um, in the fall to midwinter up till about February. Um, likewise, the council level contest should be conducted before the end of the school year and ahead of uh, the finals that are in the fall. And that's normally between the, <clears throat> the council level would be between February and the end of April, and then the final levels in the fall, September, or October time frame. This is Avis. Can I say something about the speech contest? That's a perfect time to jump in. Go ahead, Avis. Um, the contest is the pride and joy of my life. In the 32 years that we've had it, I have served every role at the chapter level, every role at the council level, except serving as MC for the national finals. And after all these years, some of the contestants still keep in touch with me. It's an absolutely wonderful experience. Wow, that's fantastic. Thanks, Avis. Anyone else want to share uh, their chapter's experience with the speech contest, maybe with uh, some virtual activities? This is Steve Bailey. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. We have two questions in the chat room. The first one is, can you expand upon how Management Week and community service are connected? Sure can. Um, so uh, in a lot of times, you're, you're looking at professional development activities during that week. But we know that community service is another great way to get your chapter members engaged. And, Kind of an offshoot of management week besides the professional development is getting your chapter members engaged so to the extent that you can either plan a volunteer event that week or somehow tie in uh, your community activity for the month of june uh, into management week is uh, is just a definite plus that, that was a good answer um and you know over time i've learned that's why your executive management is usually supportive of community service as people out in the community, they don't really know that there's a chapter thing going on. All they see is that the company and its employees are out in the community. So you are really providing positive representation for your company when you're out there doing community service, especially if you have a company logo service. Okay, the second question is, can we get more information on how to put on a casino night? <laughs> Um, I think that was something that Shelly mentioned during hers, right? Next door to a casino. <laughs> um, well, you definitely would want to make sure that's okay with your company, I think, before you went through anything like that. Um, Shelly, did you want to mention anything on that? I think you mentioned that during your, your remarks earlier. Speech contests. I didn't catch that. What was the comment? All right, I, I don't know if that, uh, that'll apply to this section here, Steve, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep uh, moving then if that's okay. All right, I did have another one, uh, another go question ahead. come in, and it said, are contingency plans being considered for the October contest if there are any additional restrictions or contestant concerns about travel? You want me to take that, Steve, or did you want to speak to that? Um, I'll take a stab and then you can clean up my mess. How's that? Oh, goodness. Why don't you start off? Go ahead. <laughs> okay. um, you know, who knows what's coming? In the short term, I want to do a shout out to the three chapters comprising the North Texas Council because they just concluded a very successful virtual uh, council speech contest. Um, Wendell Kashan, who uh, is the North Texas Council guru, former chairman of the board, and current co-chair of Association Development. Wendell um, put together an entire process. He's also documented it. We'll make it available for any chapter or council in the future who wants to put on a virtual contest. 
where we A, we proved it could be done, and B, it gave us um, some how-tos and some how-not-tos, primarily how-tos, for doing one virtually in October, should that be necessary. Our current plan is we are, we are planning for a conference. Um, I'm in the process of hiring speakers. Um, we believe by October will be all systems go, um, but that's not guaranteed. So um, we will have a speech contest for the students no matter what. If we have to do it virtually, we'll do it, and we'll do a good job of it. Sounds great, Steve. I have nothing to add to that. Okay. All right. Uh, Thanks for pausing us there to get to those questions, Steve. All right. Uh, so as we're getting toward the end here, um, we want to make sure we recognize our volunteers. So here's some uh, questions that you can uh, ponder. Uh, how do you go about recognizing your members that volunteer? Uh, do you get executives to participate in that recognition? Uh, what kind of un unique rewards would you use or do you use? And how do you go about making it really special for them? So that's one thing we want to make sure to do is uh, they're not expecting anything in return, but a nice thank you is always appreciated. All right, there's some reference materials available on the website. We went over uh, a lot of the sections that are included in these guides here on the left. Um, this pr presentation provided you with insights not only on how to conduct uh, chapter council level speech contests, but how to become an award-winning community services chapter. It is our hope that you'll now apply this information to your particular circumstances and derive both a sense of accomplishment along with the feeling of satisfaction from being involved in a variety of community service activities. And all these guidebooks here can be downloaded at nma1.org uh, under the chapter council guidebook section. And that takes us to the end. So we got about uh, a couple minutes left for questions. Was there anything else, Steve, that has come through in the chat? Or anything people want to mention uh, if you take yourself mm -hmm. off mute? I don't see anything else in the chat room, Matt. Okay. Uh, well, thank you for a wonderful job. Um, and you were the perfect person to do this, having just chaired the Communications and Community Services Committee. So um, I was hoping they'd really throw some hard questions at you, make you have to really dig deep, deep. But um, you could have answered them, but that's all right. So um, thank you for doing a nice job for us. You know, the best part of this thing is we weren't sure if we were going to stay on time throughout the day or not. And we actually are. Um, do you have, actually got a couple minutes, if you have any last minute words of wisdom that kind of come to mind after putting this presentation together? Uh, uh, sure, Steve. Oh, is, go ahead, Avis. I have one more comment. Um, the question about connecting Management Week in America and community services. Back in the days when I had a chapter, we always presented a Manager of the Year Award at the Management Week in America ce celebration. And 75% of the time, we gave that to some manager of a community services program. And that was one way that we connected the two. Gotcha. Because we, because we, we did a lot of work in the community, but we also a lot of saw a lot of uh, community programs that were underfunded and underrecognized, and it was one way that we took to at least call to the attention of our chapter and hopefully our executive advisors and going up the chain that there was this community service out there that was worthy of recognition. And that's how we do it. Great, thanks Avis. Uh, so yeah, just to wrap up, I would just add that uh, we're all in this together. So our companies and our members are looking for us as leaders of our chapters to, to be those leaders and to, to get everybody through this uh, in one piece and even better on the other side. So uh, I would uh, embrace the challenge, don't run from it. And uh, as I said, we're all in this together. So good luck. Hey, Matt, um, one thought comes to mind. Most people in the audience don't know this. Um, a few months prior to this coronavirus mess, um, the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan decided to embark on a huge change in how they operate. And they came up with a work at home program 
uh, that I'm sure a lot of people were excited about, a lot of people were probably bummed out about. A lot of folks were like, what's this about? Um, can you take 45 seconds and let us know how it's going? And, and I mean, what a, what a strange sense of timing that before the rest of the world was sent home, you folks were headed home. Yeah, for sure. So it's been a couple of years now that we've had uh, this pilot going on. And uh, I think it's, it really helped us prepare for the situation because it wasn't as much of a culture shock going from two to two days to four days, possibly uh, being at home to, to being home every day. So uh, for those that are able to do so in a non-essential function, uh, to be able to, to work from home on your laptop. And uh, it's just been a great work-life balance, I think, for a lot of people. And I've heard very few, if any, drawbacks from, from the, the program. Well, I think it certainly speaks to almost everybody in the business world says we are going to all be approaching some aspects of work, and especially where working from home is possible, differently than we did six weeks ago. So I guess it remains to be seen, and uh, we'll see how it all looks months and months from now. So again, yep, we thank you for a wonderful job. We appreciate you taking your time uh, to do this for us. And uh, we'll now get ready for our next presenter who's going to talk to us about membership recruitment, membership retention, and membership growth. And heavens knows that's an important topic. I think so. <clears throat> and that's being done by a um, member of our anime board of directors, Clay Van Meter. And Clay works for Boeing in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And something we found out when Clay came to Maybe we knew this before the January board meeting, I'm not sure, um, but I certainly got it reinforced. Uh, while Clay lives in Oklahoma City, he and his wife drove in for the board meeting. And the reason she came with him was to see family. And lo and behold, Clay was born and raised um, about 25 miles from Dayton, Ohio, um, if not closer. Um, so uh, from downtown Dayton, he's really just a suburb anymore. So we had a native uh, coming to Dayton for the board meeting that we didn't know. So, and uh, then we took Clay to one of our favorite restaurants and his wife discovered they're foodies, my favorite kind of people. So Clay, uh, when I put out the SOS saying I need a couple volunteers, Clay stepped right up and he said, no guts, no glory. Again, my favorite expression. And he said, uh, I'll be happy to do it. So it is my pleasure to introduce from Boeing, Oklahoma City in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. It's a lot of Oklahoma. Clay Bandy. It's Clay on. Thanks, Steve, for that uh, very uh, kind introduction. Can everybody hear me well? Yes, yes. Yes. Great, thank you, thank you. Wow, I've got, uh, I've got some tough acts to follow today. Uh, but before we get going, just a public service announcement, if you will. Uh, take, a, take a minute uh, while I get started here and go, feel free to stand up and stretch uh, as I continue on. And uh, give yourself a break if you're taking copious notes or, or typing away taking notes. Uh, we don't want you to get writer's cramp or anything. All these presentations will be available. Uh, after uh, today and tomorrow's session. So I just wanted to pass that along first. Okay, uh, let me talk about uh, my background a little bit. Uh, been with the Boeing Company uh, 20 plus years, several capacities, engineering, engineering management, program management, uh, and also uh, a very proud Air Force veteran uh, for a few years before that as well. Um, started out uh, as the chapter president uh, for the Boeing Oklahoma Leadership Association back in 2019. So I'm in my second of a two-year term, if you will, and then um, came into an associate uh, board of directors uh, role for a while. I'm now uh, national. I'm also on the chair, co-chair uh, committee for uh, recognition. Uh, and you'll hear our other co-chair member, uh, Glenn Bunton, tomorrow. So thank you again for the opportunity. Next slide, please. Connecting with your members. Um, you're gonna hear some common themes in my presentation that you've heard all throughout the presentation uh, this morning. Uh, and there's, that's, 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 by, that's by design. In particular, we're gonna talk about recruitment, engagement, and retention. And engagement, in my mind, it's in the middle of that phrase, but it's probably 
the most important. It's one thing to get somebody in, it's another thing to keep them. And if you keep them, then eventually we can, but we have to keep engagement going. As we heard this early in a, pre, in a prior presentation, maybe from Steve, that engagement, employee engagement uh, is, is, is paramount. And, uh, and we'll talk about that more. So again, this was just kind of the, the big picture. Uh, I won't go through all the all the, the details and all charts. Uh, I'll hit a few highlights and then I'll try to share a few uh, anecdotes from my point of view and my experiences, if you will, uh, as we go through this. So the agenda here again is, uh, you know, establishing and connecting with our members. Um, we're going to uh, Next slide, please. So let's talk about uh, the membership uh, life cycle, right? There's five key life cycle stages to sustain membership growth. So we're gonna talk, uh, there's awareness, recruitment, engagements, uh, renewals, and then reinstatements. That, that's kind of the, the big picture. There's a phase to that, right? Folks may not even know about your chapter, what your chapter does. Then you want to recruit them. And then you want to, again, go back to the engagement part of this. Uh, you know, what is it that keeps folks excited to be part of this? Again, especially from a, 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 the environment that most people are in where this is, uh, you know, time is, is, is a resource uh, challenge in many cases. So how do we get people together to to engage and have fun and learn as we go through this. And then renewal, keep going, and then and then reinstate as we go along as well. Uh, next chart, please. Can you hear me? Well, you, well, yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I'm having a hard time. It won't change for some reason. Oh, okay. No problem, I just wanna make sure. There okay. we go. So let's talk about uh, the basis of what we call the target market, right? Membership teams are a strategic plan that identifies the market. So this could be anywhere from new professionals within the company, former members of the chapter, or, or, or young professionals. So really, uh, I think all industries are experiencing this if there's four generations at work. Anybody from a college new hire, to uh, you know, mid experience to senior experience. Some may be coming into your company uh, from another company with experience, or maybe coming out of the service, uh, that type of thing. So uh, it's really quite stratified, and, and that's a good thing because we really want to target across the board uh, because everybody's got experiential uh, tool sets to bring uh, uh, to to the overall team. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so let's uh, let's look at our team. Let's look out at our team. So who are we and what do we want to do? Um, we know that we're the first line of communication with membership, right? We really want to focus on getting new members and returning. So how do we do that? How do we recruit? How do we keep folks satisfied? Um, there's always an opportunity to keep people engaged. And I think that the, the key to all of this is, and we've heard it throughout the day, is about enthusiasm and that's not necessarily you know a, a cheerleading type of uh, approach to it it's about realizing you know what's the, the return on investment on being part of an organization like this right so we have uh, we have what we call our, uh, our bumper sticker if you will uh, or elevator speech whatever you want to call it at our chapter level for Boeing Oklahoma Leadership Association and it's three basic tenets that we like to keep literally on our desktop we're having it in our pocket, wherever we're going around, wherever we're meeting other people around the, uh, around the organization. Um, and this is kind of the, um, the value proposition, if you will. Um, BOLA is a chapter of 9,000 plus strong national management association, the leadership development organization. BOLA is committed to personal and professional leadership development for all levels and functions. And that's, that's key. I'll talk about that in a minute. And as our site has grown in particular, the timing is good to connect reconnect and have some fun. It's about relationship building and, uh, and having fun while we do it so that uh, we can all learn and grow together from a leadership perspective. Okay. 
Next slide, please. So let's talk about recruiting first. Next slide, please. So we obviously want to advertise open positions to membership. So that's how I got started. There was a uh, there was an electronic uh, election uh, for 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 president in 2019 uh, for the upcoming 2019 year. Obviously, a couple of months prior to that, uh, and uh, I ended up uh, being honored to uh, to step into that role. And uh, it's, it's important that we uh, we get the word out and let people know that and not just the uh, the formal board. Uh, positions per se, but even some of the committee memberships. Well, it's important that, that people have an opportunity to step into uh, roles where they can they can professionally grow. Um, and uh, as we heard earlier, I think where some folks are sometimes get a little shied away from a potential, you know, time commitment versus you know, the day job, if you will, and, and other family commitments and and interests and whatnot. But uh, you know, what you put in is what you get out. And uh, as long as we kind of keep that out in front of everybody, that. The, uh, the advertisement of the positions uh, should, you know, keep the flow going. Okay. It's about uh, enthusiasm and energy. You saw that. If you go back, please. Thank you. Uh, the qualifications we're looking for, we should be looking for in our teams across the board. Uh, enthusiasm and energy, again, it, it's about putting in so that you get out of it because uh, there's a lot of opportunities to uh, to really learn and develop from a a, uh, a leadership point of view. Let me go back to that just for a step, theme for a second. So when I mentioned about our bumper sticker, uh, saying our value proposition is about um, being part of a, of a 9,000 strong NMA association, the leadership development organization, Steve, at the, uh, at the uh, national conference had given us a history uh, primer on, uh, on NMA, which was outstanding. And, and a lot of folks will say, well, why do you, why do you want to hear history? That sounds, you know, Meh. but you, you can't know where you're going if you don't know where you've been. And, and the rebranding of the leadership portion of this for NMA uh, is, is profound because a lot of folks come in and they think National Management Association from a chapter point of view is about a management track. Not necessarily so. Uh, we have engineering tracks, we have management tracks in, in, in our company and other companies too as well. But the real message is this is about leadership. And that's from the first day you walk in to being with the company for many, many, many years. Uh, and, and that's really what the essence of it is. Okay, and that's and keeping our team motivated is, is is really what we're trying to do. Next slide, please. Got to set goals. Sometimes we kind of go, uh, goal setting, right? But uh, if you don't set the goals, then you can't measure them. Um, and uh, we're always looking for increasing membership by 10%, uh, let's say, in any given year. And in uh, in NMA. Uh, uh, folks on the on the national level certainly help uh, focus us on that as we need to, uh, and and it's important, especially uh, again as we as a as if you're in a growing organization like we are, it's important we continue to grow because we want everybody's diverse inputs on on the leadership topic. Okay, uh, you can have membership drives uh, formally, but sometimes they're informal as well. Uh, as, uh, as in fact, in many cases we've been to organizational events at our site. And uh, we kind of have our traveling um, banner that goes with us. It's a pull out six foot from the floor up, and it says BOLA, Learn, Grow, Develop, Network, and Mentor. And that goes everywhere we go, whether it's uh, new hires coming in on uh, every other Friday or uh, it's at a, uh, a, an event where all the other clubs of the, of the organization uh, show and discuss what they do as well. Uh, but but you've got to set the measurements, and you, and you should try always to try to grow. Next slide, please. Got to do a little planning. We talked about this before. Um, we've got to visit it at least and revisit it at least monthly. Uh, if you don't, then you start to lose the uh, the control of uh, of actions that need to happen, and especially for any major events that you may want to do for fun, like a ball game event or you know bowling event at the end of the year, which is very popular for us. You, you've got to plan that out months in advance, uh, and then check on the status of it to make sure that you know when. 100 people show up that it's all ready to go. We've heard that in some of the early presentations as well. Uh, and then get and then get uh, surveys out, get some feedback, right? I, I had a mentor once that told me feedback is the breakfast of champions, right? You've got to ask. If you don't know, you don't know, right? So you have to ask. And then be flexible with it as well. Next slide. Okay. Again, uh, planning and membership drives. Uh, getting executive leadership involved, that's a big deal. Um, 
it, it shows that the general membership and, and the leadership of the chapter are really interested in developing as leaders because data is data, but leaders have to make hard decisions based on data. And, you, and, and leadership is a long, a lifelong activity uh, that, that, uh, that is, uh, is to be grown. It's not just something that you read a book on and say, okay, I'm a leader now, right? And, and when you get the executives in there, you, you, they know that you know that you care about that, number one. And number two, they've got their experiential leadership sets to share uh, many times informally in five minutes, which is really powerful for anybody in the company, regardless if they've been there a year or 20 years. Um, so there's a, lot of, there's a lot to that uh, as far as membership and including the, the, uh, the, the senior leadership in your organizations. Next slide. Again, this is back to planning, uh, job functions, uh, salary unit, multiple shifts, age range. This is again, really the, the, the strategy of, of a diversified uh, team member uh, look and set because again, everybody's got something to bring to the table. Um, and, and as far as job functions, I wanna make that, kind of emphasize that again. Uh, some folks uh, were, would have a, a, an idea if you didn't communicate it that National Management Association, it was just a management, you know, track. And if someone wasn't necessarily interested in that, that they didn't really want to, uh, you know, participate. And, and that's part of the truth. Again, this is about leadership. So, whether you're engineer or you're in finance or contracts or uh, or business development or marketing, it's all about the, it's all about the leadership. It's really what it's about. And we want everybody across the board. Again, we meet the, the new folks coming in on day one. And then we uh, we talk to other folks too that are coming in that have been from uh, been with the company a while or other companies as well. Next slide, please. Okay, you got to have a budget. Everybody's resource limited, right? Um, the dues are reasonable. We tell everybody it's reasonable, and what you get out of it is uh, is uh, the ability to network, the ability to uh, have some major fun events and get to know each other and and families, uh, and also uh, just to uh, take advantage of uh, the NMA opportunities that are out there, such as the webinars. Uh, Influencing Without Authority is a great one that comes to mind, uh, which we know from a leadership point of view, anytime in your career, you're gonna have a situation where you, uh, you have to lead, but you don't have authority. And that's, that's probably more true than any with a lot of flat organizations. But the point is you've got resources, so you can't go over the budget. You've gotta work very closely with your treasurer and, uh, and make sure that, uh, you know, the entire team through uh, transparency understands what's going on. In fact, for our chapter, we um, we post uh, openly our uh, our SharePoint, which has uh, you know, our calendar activities and whatnot, but it also has our finances out there too. So anybody in the general membership of our chapter can go in and see, you know, how we're tracking this month and, and what, what, what our plans are for, uh, for the year, that type of thing. Okay, next slide. Communicating. Well, wow, that's probably the hardest thing that we all do, right? It's not just communicating, but it's effectively communicating. Even even tougher in the, in the kind of the lockdown mode we've been in. Um, but there's many many ways to do that, as we know. And some are more comfortable with certain versions than others. Some you know like more than others. You know, electronic, word of mouth, uh, emails, uh, publications, that type of thing, right? There's all kinds of different ways to do that. Um, but we need to stay in communication. That's the point. That's the point. No, no dead air, if you will, to use a radio term, right? Um, we need to communicate. We need to frequently communicate. And, and again, going back to that that feedback, right? We need that feedback so that uh, we are getting the proper amount of communication out and the, and, and the contextual communication that that the members will, you know, have a retention positivity out of that. So we want to continue to do that. Uh, we just need to find out what it is because every organization is different, every group is different. Next slide, please. Okay. Membership relations is the first line of communication with membership. Always sell your chapter. And then that goes back to my uh, bumper sticker comment, right? And you don't have to be a salesperson. You know, it, the reality is whether you're, you know, professionally an engineer again, or, you know, finance or marketing or, uh, or contracts, um, you are effectively selling an idea regardless, right? Any, any given day, you're trying to sell an idea. It doesn't matter what the functional background of the, of the, of the idea is, right? And again, that's, that's really focusing on, uh, on uh, 
keeping out the return on investment to the members, right? So that they uh, they are engaged and that they, they are retained and they want to grow and bring in their friends to grow as well, right? Um, networking uh, is just so a huge part of that. A lot of folks like to get uh, the opportunity to network uh, with the senior uh, leadership and executives. That's great. And But what traditionally happens is that there's some off, side networking that happens with folks that they had not met before and didn't even know you know what they do and then they find out they've got some commonality and hobbies or whatnot uh, you know or the same uh, work uh, type of environment that they are maybe a different division that type of thing so uh, the networking is is huge it's horizontal as well as vertical and that's really uh, the return on and the investment for each member I think in the, in the end of the day building those relationships again right okay next chart uh, again, we talk about various ways to communicate uh, electronically or otherwise. Um, one of the things that we've tried to do in our chapter is, is do the road show, right? Take, take a few charts of pictures of fun events and that bumper sticker I mentioned and go talk to the senior executives at their staff meetings. So their managers and leaders in turn can get the word out and always, always have those lower level folks, you know, ask you to come to their staff meetings as well, right? So to get out there and, 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 and and, and, and share uh, the message and, and the value, if you will, of the, of the leadership opportunities, right, for this. Uh, email, not everybody reads email, or I should say everybody gets blasted with email <laughs> at times, right? But that's okay, you gotta start somewhere electronically more than likely, but you know, following up, uh, you know, working with your site for getting uh, information put out on a uh, an electronic uh, monitor that talks about, hey, this is what's happening at the site today or next month or that kind of stuff. You know, you can work through all that to try to just keep the word out there. Um, and the more you reach, the more people will be interested. Simple as that. Next. So, again, back to communication and promoting and new hire orientation. I talked about that a little bit. Um, networking during the mixers, uh, um, chapter publications. There's all kinds of different ways to do it. But the point is, is just to mention, hey, have you heard about, uh, you know, leadership um, uh, association. Have you heard about National Management Association? No. Well, let me tell you about it, right? Just the hip pocket uh, information can go a long way sometimes in the elevator speeds, if you will. Next question, or I'm sorry, next slide. Okay. And again, this goes back to the feedback, right? What can we, what can NMA do for you? Uh, and this is the feedback up. So I've had the opportunity of being in the chapter for a while and now being at the National for for a little while and uh, I, I, I thoroughly see both sides and I love the connection out there and uh, and, the, and the resources are incredible and, and I'm so glad that uh, some of the early presentations we talked about all the, uh, the the publications of the pamphlets if you will for the different uh, different themes uh, and, and that's huge and I, I can't say enough for the small time I've worked uh, with the uh, NMA staff how how, how uh, accommodating uh, they are for all the chapters out there they're just they're there to help it's as simple as that Next question, or next slide, forgive me. Um, next slide. So this is a uh, member relations teams, two-way communication. Um, again, this is just really about getting, um, uh, recruiting uh, out into uh, the different uh, levels of uh, of the organization that you want to get into and advertising is always good to keep the awareness again our, 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 our what I call a tactile reminder of what we do our banner that I'm talking about uh, we take that to every event we go if we're in a conference room and we're going to have somebody come in and, and do a webinar we set that banner out in front of the door so that as people are walking by even if they're not part of the leadership association going to the webinar they see the sign and they go oh I wonder what that's all about right those kind of things. Uh, you just gotta kind of visually get the word out there and then follow up uh, is, is in other in other mediums as well. Next slide. Okay. Guidebooks again. Uh, that that's critical. It's great that it's out there, and uh, I encourage all chapters to, to to make sure you share that information as well. Next slide. And uh, yeah, Greenville's coming up. Uh, my first conference was in Portland last year. Thoroughly enjoyed that. Made that kind of a family event too. Had family in town and uh, some families in Northern California joined us. So the schedule was great. We worked uh, throughout the day and then we had some free time in the evenings and whatnot. So uh, that was a great time. And, and this looks like a great event as well. 
Next slide. I believe that's it. Okay. All right. Any uh, any questions? Hi, Clay. It's Marcel Laranjeira from NOCA Leadership Association. I, I met you last year in the NMA conference, if you recall. Yeah, we, we had yeah. a, uh, before you asked your, before you asked your question, yeah, I enjoyed our conversation about uh, Formula One and Ferrari. <laughs> yes, it was nice <laughs> from Italy. Okay, my question is, is basically, uh, we are suffering a little bit in, in Nokia since last year because we basically set up a, a, a worldwide uh, is a, a lot of targets in terms of uh, cost reductions and people reductions and we are transforming our company since last year basically and then we lost a lot of people uh, in last year and the beginning of this year and we are uh, fortunately we are being able to the members that are leaving NLA we are bringing more members and we are increasing our members, even though with this uh, transforming uh, issue that we are facing right now in order to transform the company. And now that we have this COVID-19, uh, the last months we are doing this uh, general meet is uh, virtual also, and we are trying to invite people that are not members to the general meet. It was, I think is a little bit more difficult to get these people to be become members also. Uh, do you have an idea if other chapters or any in, or any ideas for us to increase the membership in these current times, what we can do or any other ideas? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I think uh, the opportunity is certainly there. Um, and, and perhaps while we're kind of in the situation that we're in, if we can uh, continue to, you know, share the resources so that folks can learn as much as they can about leadership, the art of leadership, which is really what we're talking about here, why we're all involved in this, right, uh, is that it will prepare us uh, when we come out of this, because there will be another challenge someday uh, in any, uh, you know, organizational or, or, or you know, life event that, uh, that, that, uh, that team members will, will, will come and, and, and have to deal with. So, uh, the more we can enforce the, the opportunity to learn uh, in this uh, leadership laboratory uh, experiment, if you will, that Lynn uh, so eloquently stated earlier today, that I think the more opportunity we have for retention and growth uh, when we get back to quote unquote normal, uh, uh, because there's always going to be other challenges uh, down the road. And, uh, and that's, that's where the strength comes in. Okay, thank you. This is thank you, Marcel. Yeah. This is Davis. I have a question. How do yes. you follow? How you go to new hire orientation and give whatever presentation you do about NMA? How do you follow up on that afterwards? Uh, that's a great question. Um, we uh, we basically uh, have uh, the the list of folks that came in, and we just uh, shoot them an email, basically with a with a link uh, that says, "Hey, it was great to meet you. Hope you enjoyed our uh, quick presentation." Uh, more information, please contact, you know, one of the board members. Just, you know, not to be too hard pressing, right, because they're kind of overwhelmed on day one, if you will, right, coming to work for the first time, many of them right out of school. Uh, but we want them to know that uh, they are more than welcome to, to reach out. And uh, and uh, and it's amazing that, that some of those that have reached out to us like that that are, you know, come, again, coming right out of school have uh, are very comfortable going to an event, a small event, even let's say maybe 30, 40 people with a few senior executives that, that always support us and other organizations as well. Uh, how, you know, what they learn and are comfortable with in a five minute conversation, uh, especially, and, and new executives too, and new senior leaders that come in from, you know, they're new to the city. Our, our executive sponsor uh, is was new to the city. Uh, and so we brought him right in. And, and so that helped him as well. And, 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 you know, having a conversation with a new hire from school, it was just great to watch that chemistry happen in a matter of five minutes. So. Um, that, that's kind of the way we approach the uh, the new hires. That's good because the the first day is is so overwhelming. I wondered if you followed up almost immediately and then waited, get, gave them uh, you know some period of time to catch their breath and followed up with them maybe a week or a couple of weeks later. Right. Right. 
Yeah, in fact, one of the one of the uh, committee members that usually supports that uh, has only been with our company two years, so he remembers very well uh, what they're dealing with. So he communicates probably better than maybe some of us that have been around longer. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, well, I think that's it. Uh, if, we're, if we're on time there, uh, back to you, Steve. Yeah. All right. What a great job. Man, we, we hired all winners today. Clay, thank you so much. I love your conversational tone. Um, you did a wonderful job. Uh, so um, we want to thank you for that. Um, and I want to thank pleasure. everybody for hanging in here with us. You know, when we decided to do this, we actually gave the uh, national officers two plans. One was to do a full day tomorrow and or today or split it into two days. And I kind of liked the two day approach because even in the East Coast, it's uh, 2.30. We still have day daylight left. And those of you further west have more daylight. Um, so uh, let us know. Um, send me an email, drop us a note uh, if you like this format, because we'll get going again tomorrow morning. Um, lucky, luckily, some of you can get an extra hour of sleep that we're on this morning, because unless you're just a total glutton for punishment, nobody's going to want to have to <laughs> sit through my presentation twice. So you can just kind of come in uh, after me, and that will be Scott Chestnut doing recognition and awards. So you can, you know, Saturday morning, you can grab another donut or do whatever and uh, then come in. But um, I'll be repeating tomorrow. But let us know uh, how you like the format. Um, one thing came up during Clay's membership growth presentation. I made a note that I want to mention to everybody. In the, in shortly after, in the mid 2000s, let's put it that way, about 2006, 2007, we rebranded. Legally, we are the National Management Association Incorporated. But all the rocket scientists that are on the board and our members and everybody else basically said, your name is killing you in today's environment. That a lot of people, when they are asked, to, will you join the Management Association, <clears throat> their hands go up, they go back, they raise their shoulders. Because um, there was a time, it's not so much today, but we all know there was a time when management was almost a four-letter word. Um, but the other problem you run into is people go, well, I'm not in management. Well, that's not the point. Um, management skills, leadership development skills, communication skills, interpersonal skills, that's all part of what we do. So we were encouraged by senior leaders, actually, from our affiliated chapters to rebrand ourselves. So that's when we came up with NMA, dot, 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 the Leadership Development Association. I tried my hardest for about the first four years after we did that. Um, I did everything but shoot people when they used the, our, our legal name, the National Management Association. Um, maybe I should have, because I'm not sure it's stuck. So now I get a chance as part of my swan song to basically say, Promote yourselves as a leadership development organization. You still got management in your chapter name, take a look at that. Um, because there are times when the obvious uh, does work against you. So um, ask people to join your leadership group. Um, make sure that you, remember I talked this morning about your brand. If people still think your brand is only management, that's probably one reason why you're having trouble getting new people new people on board. So I just wanted to toss that out there. A couple items of wrap up. <clears throat> um, all these presentations, uh, Clay mentioned that you didn't need to take notes. All these presentations are already <coughs> posted on the NMA website. So you can download them um, if you're gonna be on board tomorrow. And well, I hope you're all gonna be on board tomorrow and you want to kind of print these out and take notes on them, print out notes pages, do whatever, but they're there for your use. And we are also recording today and tomorrow. So that will be available. 
So we're doing everything possible to get you trained and to get your colleagues, maybe who for personal or business reasons couldn't join us, make sure they can get some of this after the fact. And then the very, I'll end with the, I'll end with the first thing Michelle Lewis, our chairman of the board, talked about this morning, and that is, we are, we want to, and we will do a participation certificate for everybody who participated. But in order to do that, we just ask you to drop Robin an email, Robin at animate1.org, introduce yourself, and say um, that you're here, we're, have been here, and you'd like to get your certificate. Um, and we are social distancing, so Robin's in the office, but I can't see her. Um, so if she can let me know, <coughs> are these gonna be certificates that we can just email back? Yes. Okay, so we don't need a mailing address or anything like that. Okay, um, as always, Robin has it under control. <laughs> so um, I guess we got an open mic here for a second or two. Does anybody have anything for the good of the order before we uh, adjourn for the day? Anyone? Um, Steve, this is Michelle. I just wanted to clarify, even if we registered, she still wants an email? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Because not everybody that registered was able to log on. We, that's kind of a lesson from the College of Hard Knocks. Got it. Anyone else? Well, thank you so much. It has been our pleasure to do this today. It's been more fun than I thought. Uh, our presenters have been great. They've had great information to share. And I know we'll do equally well as tomorrow, because tomorrow we end an hour, an hour earlier. So um, we didn't want to take much of your Saturday. So thank you so much. Uh, have a good afternoon and evening, and we'll see you Saturday morning. Thank you, Steve. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Take Bye. care. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye.